coming off a disappointing second half last week against Tulsa, Boise State coach Dan Hawkins faced booing fans for the first time in his career. I was disappointed when we got booed. I was very disappointed. Today, Hawkins and the Broncos take their frustrations out on an SMU team that is winless so far this year. It's the Broncos of Boise State against the Mustangs of SMU. Next on the Bronco Television Network. Live from the beautiful new Gerald Ford Stadium in Dallas, Texas, it's Broncos football. Good afternoon. I'm Ted Dawson, along with Larry Pulaski. And, Poe, it's a beautiful new stadium, but not a very pretty football team. Well, they're having a little trouble with this SMU Mustang football team, but they have been close in a lot of games. And if Boise State expects this to be a romp today, they better reevaluate that. Good defense. Expect to see a lot of running. And that, of course, means one of the stars of this game should be David Michael. Absolutely. The Bronco running game is going to be led by David Michael. He is leading the WAC conference right now, and he had his 600-yard game last week. David Michael will be a huge part of this offense today. And SMU, as all they do is run, so look for this guy to have a big game, Dane Oldham. Dane Oldham and his mates on the front and the linebacking crew have got to have a great game today because you're right, that is the strength of SMU's offense. They have got to hold up. If David Michael is the number one runner in the WAC, this guy is number two, Keelan Kincaid. Absolutely. This guy is a very, very good running back. He has done some great things for SMU. Boise State has got to watch him closely today. If there's a strength on this Mustang team, it's the defense, and this is the strength of the defense. Brian Bischoff is the best linebacker on this team. He reminds me a lot of Andy Avalos and a guy that moves around very mobile linebacker, a very good defense for SMU. As a matter of fact, SMU coach Phil Bennett says that he likes Andy Avalos. It's one of the best uh, linebackers he's seen, and he thinks he's a lot like yeah, they Bischoff. Really, they really do. They almost look like twins out there. Well, speaking of outstanding linebackers, let's go down to our playmaker on the field, Jeff Caves. Boise State has worked hard this week getting off to a fast start. We'll see if it comes true in the first quarter. Hopefully we'll get an opportunity to talk to Hawk at the end of the second quarter and of course post game. Ted? Thank you very much, Jeff Caves. The keys to the game today, Paul. Well, let's look at our overhead door keys to the game. First of all, the defensive line, we've already talked about it. They and the linebacking crew have got to stop the running game from SMU. Second of all, Ryan Dinwiddie got dinged up a little bit last week against Tulsa. This offensive front must protect Ryan Dinwiddie today. And then third on special teams, I think the return game of the punt and the kickoff team has got to improve field position for Boise State's offense. It uh, has been sterling in the first part of the season, but as you say, it needs to get better. We'll find out how much better because we've got the kickoff coming right up. Stay with us. It's the Broncos against the Mustangs of SMU on the Bronco Television Network. Welcome back to Dallas, Texas, as you take a look at the Mustang there from SMU, a program that is trying to come back from the death penalty 15 years ago. It truly was the death penalty as this team was left for dead when they had to lose f football for two years. You see a beautiful Dallas day, 74 degrees, wind at only five miles per hour in this gorgeous new stadium. It's just unfortunate. It seems, Poe, that nobody in Dallas cares. Take a look at our coaches there. Coach Hawk on the left, Phil Bennett. The SMU coach on the right has uh, got a little, uh, maybe a little bit of a reprieve. We just learned this morning, along with uh, the rest of the country, that it looks like this team is going to bolt the whack for uh, Conference USA. I don't know how much of a reprieve that's going to be, because uh, the Broncos, by the way, have won the toss. They've won 12 straight versus uh, against whack opponents, and uh, they're a heavy favorite to win today. McMurray set to kick off for SMU. Back deep, looks like. Uh, Chris Carr, along with Donnie Hack. Here's our Pizza Hut kickoff, brought to you by Pizza Hut, the best pizza under one roof, Pizza Hut. A footed kicker, and this ball game is underway. Short kick, coming to Carr at the 13. Breaks free. But can't get away from number 27, Alvin the boofy. The Broncos worked on that short kickoff all week long. They were expecting that exact thing to happen, and they got pretty decent field position off of it, but that is a, a tactic that SMU uses a lot. It'll be first and 10 for the Broncos is Ryan Dinwiddie. 6'1", 192 pounder. You see his stats. An outstanding year so far, hitting 60% of his passes. 
<laughs> Great pass efficiency rating, too. With that touchdown interception ratio, that's going to be a factor. Double tight end formation. They fake the give to Michael. They're throwing long. Lawrence Beatty is there. Moodley gets him down, but not before a huge gain down to the 36 yard line. Lawrence Beatty getting his first start. Let's take a look at our starting lineups presented by your local stinker station. The offensive front, the same as we've seen, except with Jason Turner inserted into the right tackle position and the skill positions, the same cast of characters there that we've seen all year long. It's first and 10, ball at the 36 yard line. David Michael goes up the middle for about four yards. And Melvin Williams, the 6'2", 245-pound junior out of Elysian Fields, Texas, makes the stop. And here's our defensive front for SMU. Desmond Jones is just a freshman out of Carter High School, a famed high school uh, here in Dallas, Texas. And the three linebackers we talked about, Bischoff being one of the best, but the two DD guys are pretty good too, DD Lee and DD Johnson. Second down and seven. Three-step drop, quick across the middle, broken up by Nabufi. Alvin Nabufi out of Missouri City, Texas. 6'1", 209-pound sophomore. There are 60 freshmen or redshirt freshmen on the 108-man roster of this SMU team. So they're clearly building for the future. That time Ryan Dinwiddie saw a blitz coming and he audibled out of it at the line of scrimmage. He tried to hit Gilligan on a quick, quick crossing route, but he didn't connect. Lucky not to get that one intercepted. Beatty this time splits out wide to the left side. Gilligan goes on a slot on the right. That's Gilligan in motion. Five-step drop. Throws behind Beatty. And Ruben Moodley on the coverage, but that ball was just poorly thrown. Had enough yardage to get the first down, but the receiver and quarterback not on the same page on that throw. And they're going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth down. down. You didn't expect anything else, did you? <laughs> I thought we might see a field goal kicker come out on the field. Tyler Jones is Tyler hit Jones. from 52 yards, so not the plan today. And Dinwiddie overthrows the intended receiver, Acre. And T.J. Acre will... Uh, not get anywhere near the ball as did when he goes to the sidelines and SME was held on their first series. Well, kind of like Tulsa last week. A brilliant first play and then it dwindles. Dinwiddie too got pressure that time from Don Stansbury coming off that defensive line. Gave him a pretty good lick at the end of that play. Watch for number 32, Keelan Kincaid. He virtually, on every first down play, runs the ball. Let's see if they do it here. Well, they were going to pass. There is a flag on the play. You know, a lot of people here were talking about how Phil Bennett is so predictable. Well, he has uh, virtually every first down this year. They've run Kincaid, and he was going to do something different that time. And the Broncos... A little too quick on the snap. Watch it. You can see it right here. Broncos encroach, come across that neutral zone, and actually made contact. So that Julius Roberts, the man jumping off sides. That's what creates the penalty, no doubt. Matt Rushbook split out wide to the right side. And the give us to Kincaid. This time... We'll go back and start all over again because it was the Mustangs who uh, got the early jump. Oh, Travis Berger. Right, Travis Berger is the right, one. Right side of the formation, jumped over the line of scrimmage. I thought it looked like one of the Mustangs. Here's our starting lineups presented by Stinker Station. And that front five for SMU. Good size, but not huge. Hargis is just a freshman at 6'4", 310 pounds. Just a couple of seniors. Sterling Harris is a senior, and the tight end is a senior. It's a very young team. 
So the first first down goes to SMU, and they haven't run a play yet. Bartell to throw. He's going long. Rushbrook is out there, but the ball is overthrown. Julius Brown on the coverage. Looks like Julius Brown held him up just enough. As you take a look at the starting defensive lineup for the Broncos, it's been the same every game so far. Julius Roberts had his breakout game last week against Tulsa. Travis Berger is an improving linebacker. Corey Hall, Andy Avalos, Chris Carr, outstanding defensive players. West Nurse, one of the tri-captains. Julius Brown, you just saw on that play. And Gabe Franklin, the fastest player on the Broncos team. Second ten. Bartell out of the gun this time. Bartell flips it out. Kincaid maybe got a yard before Andy Avalos stayed home. And what a job Andy Avalos does. I was able to isolate him on some plays last week. Watched him an entire half. He's just so active out there. Very mobile linebacker. Not the biggest guy in the world at 225, but what a heart and what mobility. A great asset to have for a defense is a fast linebacker like that. And I think we see some similarities with SMU's defensive front, too. Wants to head for the FBI someday. Trips on the right side this time for SMU. Third down and make it eight. Bartell. Throwing for Rushbrook. Once again, it's overthrown. Bartell, who was drafted by the Cincinnati Reds as a pitcher two years ago, just flat overthrew that one. Threw that one high and wide. I've seen that a lot in the film, watching him over the course of the six games that they've played so far this season. He has a tendency to overthrow a lot of balls, and it may have something to do with, uh, with his old baseball background, but... Uh, certainly a guy they need to have on track. If the running, if they're not going to run, he's got to do it. Ryan Mensel to punt. He's a sophomore out of Lockhart, Texas, averaging only uh, 35.4 yards a punt. High spiraling to Tim Gilligan, calls for the fair catch and takes it right there. So the Broncos will have much worse starting position. They'll be going first and 10 from the 18-yard line. There's no score here in Dallas, Texas. Lots of football left, so stay with us. What cities make up the homes of all the WAC members? That could be changing yeah, soon. Yeah, it could be definitely changing. And that's kind of an apropos question, I guess. Uh, now that we've just learned who the WAC is, some of them are moving out. Lee Marks has come in as a wide receiver, wide to the right side. He goes in motion. The give us to him. Marks tries to turn the corner. He's got some blockers. Lee Marks has the first down and knocked out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. Alan, or Alvin Nabufi knocks him out of bounds. Well, Lee Marks got a lot of touches in pack practice this week. I think the fumbling episodes between Donnie Heck and, and Brad Lau had a little trouble last week. Excellent job out on the corner of blocking that play. But Marks got a lot of touches, so I thought we might see him in this game. I didn't think we'd see him quite this early. Marks' dad flew in from Los Angeles to be here today. Dinwiddie. Complete. And down at the 41-yard line. Knocked out of bounds by Jeremy Harper. Is number 83, Jerry Smith. Jerry Smith got a laser beam from Ryan Dinwiddie that time. That pass was absolutely on the numbers and in stride. The best pass that Dinwiddie has thrown. Absolutely. Far. I mean, look at that. Just hitting right on stride. We were a little concerned that maybe Ryan had still had some ill effects from last week when he got dinged up a little bit, had a little bit of a, a head trauma. Not really, I guess, a concussion, but it was similar. Trips on the left side. The give is to Michael. Michael cuts back and is hit right at the line of scrimmage by uh, number 30, Don Arimia Stansberry. There's a guy that uses two last names, Arimia Stansberry. Fills up the spotting board in a hurry. He does, there's no doubt about that. He's out of El Paso. Oh, by the way, that's not his full name. His full name is Don Nephi Arimia Stansberry. What if we, how about if we just call him Don? Yeah. Michael splits out wide as a wide receiver this time. Quick toss, complete to Gilligan. Gilligan has the first down. Down at about the 24-yard line. And this is SMU's biggest nightmare. Five receivers in the pattern, and they had no idea who to cover. 
Ruben Moodley makes the stop. He's a senior out of Garland. Ryan Dinwiddie with a, over 7,000 yards in his career. Third all-time at Boise State. Still has a lot of football left to play in this 2003 campaign. By the way, the guy that made that last tackle, born in Pretoria, South Africa. How's that for an international team? Donnie Heck goes over left tackle for about six yards down to the 20-yard line. You can just see that it looks like the Broncos are going to run a lot of offense today. And I mean by that, a lot of different plays are in the scheme this yep. week. A lot of different looks to try to keep this very mobile SMU defense off guard a little bit. SMU switches at least two and normally three and sometimes four players on every down. David Michael gets hit right at the line of scrimmage. May have fall, fallen forward for a couple of yards, but it'll bring up third down as Jamie Harper, the sophomore out of Atlanta, Texas, makes the stop. Harper came into this game with 25 tackles. Third and four. Harper did a good job getting up field a little bit and getting into the backfield. Took Michael's legs out. Not going anywhere without those. Broncos 0 for 1 on their only third down conversion attempt. Dinwiddie throws across the middle to the, uh, I think it's McPherson. Is that McPherson 88? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see whether it was 88 or 82. That was Tony McPherson, number 88. Since Kevin Lousman hasn't caught a pass all year. I, I don't think Lousman's going to be at the receiving end of too many passes, but Boy, McPherson What a good is. blocker he is, though. Excellent blocker. Excellent long snapper, too. Kind of got forced into that duty, and he's done a heck of a job. First and ten for the Broncos. Michael again. They are showing that good run defense that SMU is, if they're famous for anything, famous for that. Boise State has not had much success running the ball between the tackles. The yardage that they've gotten has come outside where they've created some creases. I think they're going to have a lot of trouble moving this defensive front off the ball, and then with the three linebackers that they bring to the table, too, that creates all kinds of problems. Second and goal from the 10-yard line. Sherm Blaser has checked in now. He splits wide to the left side. Dinwiddie throwing to Blaser and has him at the five-yard line. Ruben Moodley makes the stop. Nice catch. He had to go down and get that ball. Only one person was going to catch that. Blazer had to lay out to get that one. It'll be third down and goal. Blazer, one of six tight ends that the Broncos use. Another freshman. Pass into the end zone. Laying out for it is Gilligan, but uh, just overthrown. I think Gilligan's running with one shoe. I think he lost his shoe on the cut at the line of scrimmage. He did. That's probably why he couldn't get to the ball. He didn't have enough traction. He makes his break. This is just a fade route into the corner. They throw the ball up. Gilligan can't quite get to it. The one shoe wonder there. Nice camera work. Tyler Jones will try the field goal. Jones is 10 of 13 on field goals. Mike Sanford to hold. The ball is up. The kick is good. And the Broncos have the early lead here in Dallas, Texas. There's 7.53 left to play in the first period. The score, the Boise State Broncos 3, SMU nothing. Ted, let's take a look at the answer to our Domino's whack fact of the game. We were looking for the cities that make up the homes of the Western Athletic Conference members. Well, obviously Dallas, because we're in Dallas, and we know right. Boise. So you've got El Paso, and Fresno, and Honolulu, Houston, Ruston, Reno, San Jose, and Tulsa. And Houston and Tulsa may not be there much longer and if what we heard Dallas. today is true. Tyler Jones kicks it deep into the end zone. Rutledge is going to let it go. Jones has done that time after time this year. And as we've mentioned before, it's a real weapon when you uh, don't have to worry about runbacks. And Rutledge is, is the leading returner in SMU history. 
Total offense right now, Boise State 110 yards, SMU 2 yards as the Broncos go 11 plays, or 77 yards in 11 plays, and take about 4.5 minutes to do it. Martell working out of the eye formation. Darren Brown and Kincaid are his setbacks. People moving all over. So far, the only offense the SMU has had has been penalties against Bron the Broncos. All-Star. This time, it's against SMU. High yard penalty remains first down. Thought it might have been against Avalos, although he, he timed, was close, it very, wasn't he? Yeah. timed it really well getting up to the line of scrimmage. Let's go down to the sidelines to Jeff Caves. You know, players, bands, cheerleaders, media people, everybody feed off emotion from the crowd. That is certainly lacking here in Ford Stadium. Hawkins knew that and in practice shut down the music and made guys come out and get accustomed to it. And now we'll see how it actually executes on the field. Ted? There is hardly anyone here. It's really a shame. Kincaid? Brought down from the back after a gain of about five yards. Paul Allen, the senior out of Timberline High School, makes the stop. That's his 16th tackle of the year. A lot of Idaho high school players on this roster for Boise State. A little bit unusual, but now I think what's happening is Boise State's keeping the good players. You know, they're not going away to go to the to the WAC or to go to another conference. 110 to 7 yards. But it is just 3 to nothing. So that's Rushbrook in motion. Bartell under no pressure. Trying to throw to Rushbrook. He was open. He had Avalos beat. But uh, the ball was just out in front of him too much. Yeah, that's the kind of matchup you really want to see as an offensive coordinator. A wide receiver with linebacker coverage. That's usually a mismatch of gigantic proportions. Matt Rushbrook, the uh, leading receiver for this team, has got 23 passes for 309 yards coming in. Cam Hall, Brad Allen check in on the nickel defense for SMU. Three down linemen. Martell on third and ten, under the rush, gets it off, and once again, just flat misses his open receiver, Trey Griffin. Griffin. But he ends up on his wallet, too, and the compliments of Andy Avalos, who pressured him into throwing that ball a little bit before he wanted to. Julius Brown on the coverage, and Ryan Menzel, who averages 35.4 yards a punt, hit a 37-yarder last time up. Tim Gilligan, the lone man, back deep. Called for a fair catch last time. And he's going to do it again. But much better field position this time for the Mustangs as Tim Gilligan takes it right at the 40-yard line where the Broncos will have it first and 10 here with 6.53 left to play in the, uh, the first quarter. Be sure to stay tuned at the end of our broadcast for the Idaho Lottery Lucky Play of the Game. We'll feature one of today's top plays sponsored by your Idaho Lottery. Encouraging players everywhere to score big. You know, watching Gilligan on that last punt, we were down on the field yesterday about this time, yeah. and looking up into the sky, the sun is brutal for those return guys that are looking towards the open end of this stadium. But what a beautiful field it is. Dinwiddie, quick toss. And Jerry Smith spins forward for a first down. Nice job as he was caught at about a seven-yard gain and just kept spinning, picks up the first down. You know, Jerry Smith has done that a lot this year, Ted. That guy, is he's, he's got a lot of Gumby-ish qualities. I mean, yeah. he's a very flexible guy, and he gets bounced around. He spins around. Watch the contact here. It spins him. He sp goes to the outside, picks up, stumbles, rumbles, bumbles for a few more yards. And finally, Jamie Harper is the man that ran him out. Boy, the... Uh, the Mustangs are everything they purported to be up front as the Broncos can get nothing going from a running standpoint. No, they're gonna have to they're gonna have to go to the flanks. And once they get those guys running around to where they're looking to go outside, maybe they'll be able to open up something on the inside. SMU Mustangs allowing 357, almost 358 yards a game. Good defense that time. Quick hitting pass play as Reggie Carrington comes off the bench. To make the stop on T.J. Acre out of Pocatello. Y'all gonna win today. And it'll be a third down and still seven yards to go. Broncos gonna go without a huddle here, trying to 
capitalize on the movement of that defense in and out of the game. Dinwiddie's got a man wide open down the middle. It's Jerry Smith again as he takes it inside the 10-yard line to about the 7. Jamie Harper beat on the play, and Smith just did the quick inside move, and Dinwiddie hit him perfectly. Classic post route. Runs down about 12 yards and breaks inside. Dinwiddie waits and waits and waits until he clears the linebackers, and then he lays that ball again right on the numbers. And yards after the catch are huge for these receivers for Boise State. Jerry Smith does it as well as any of them. Mark Odebacoon is checked into the lineup. Tony McPherson splits out wide to the left. That's Trent Lundeen who goes into the backfield. Michael, nothing. It's caught for a loss. D.D. Lee. Out of Nacogdoches, Texas. Now there's a there's a guy as we watch it again. Michael just has no place to run as Lee is right there, and you wonder why his nickname is DD because his real name is Deprimathan. I'd go with DD too. There you go. Second down and goal from the 11. Gilligan splits wide to the left. It's also Lawrence Beatty out wide left. Donnie Heck in the backfield. Heck makes a block. Man is open. Touchdown. Jim Gilligan. Jim Gilligan right there as he did the little post move and Dinwiddie hit him perfectly. That time he had both shoes on. Teddy could get the traction to get out there and get the ball. You remember they ran that play to this, the right side of the field earlier in the game and he lost his shoe and couldn't get to the ball. This time he's got both of his shoes on and he does get to the ball. Perfect throw again by Ryan Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie's made a couple of absolute beauties as Tyler Jones, who's only missed one point after in his entire career at Boise State. Makes this one good. 4.36 left to play in the first quarter. And right now, the Boise State Broncos have taken a 10 0 lead over SMU. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, Mr. Dawson, it's time for a little Bronco trivia sponsored by your local Lexus dealer. Who is the single season sack leader for Boise State University? I bet you know. I do know. All right. Tyler Jones set to kick off for the second time this afternoon as Tim Gilligan has scored incredibly his first receiving touchdown of the year. Rutledge will get a chance to return this one from two yards deep. Oh, he should not have done it. He can't even get to the 10-yard line before Donnie Heck is there to make the stop. Donnie Heck and Kabong, Deshaun Kabong, are out there. And let's take a look at the answer now to our Bronco trivia presented by Lexus. Single-season sack leader, Chris Wing. 20 in 1996. That was a heck of a year for Chris Wing and that Bronco defense. What great special teams coverage. And Poe, you said at the start of this game that we needed better special teams coverage. Doesn't get much better than that. Well, that was awesome. Donnie Heck and Kabong both, they slid through the wedge. They didn't really break it up. They just kind of knifed through it and made a great play at the eight. Bartell tries to run it to Kincaid. He's got some running room. And there goes Keelan Kincaid. Finally knocked out of bounds near midfield. Julius Brown makes a touchdown saving tackle on Keelan Kincaid. Kincaid came into this ball game averaging just 3.7 yards for uh, carry. That one was for 42, Ted, so that's going to drive that average up. His previous long game was just 22 yards, and that takes him all the way out to midfield. The end of the line of scrimmage for Boise State defensively got cut off, and they couldn't get to the pursuit angles they needed. Bartell has Kincaid as a lone setback this time. And they give it to him. Kincaid. Can't get away from West Nurse. Gains a couple of yards down to about, so let's see where they give him forward progress to the 47. So you can see the difference between that play and the last one, Ted, as they strung it out towards the sideline and were able to get up into the holes to stop those offensive linemen. And a, only a three yard game, and you say only a three yard game, after that last play, that's a victory. Second down and seven. Bartell, Brad Allen, taking the blitz. 
And now Bartell calling a new play. Throwing it for Rushbrook. Knocked away beautifully. Gabe Franklin out there on the corner doing a great job of turning back and looking for the ball just like they work on in practice every day. And he kept it out of Rushbrook's hands. Rushbrook, as we mentioned, the leading receiver. And what an outstanding athlete this kid is. Uh, first of all, he was born in Germany, another one of the international set here. All-state free safety, in addition to being an outstanding receiver, he lettered in football, basketball, baseball, track, and is the second-string putter on this SMU team. And Bartell right now is 0 for 5 in the passing game for SMU. Third down, make it 0 for 6. As the pass was intended for number two, Blake Warren, a freshman out of Art, Texas. And Chris Carr was there to break it up. Chris Carr got both of his hands on that. He almost picked that thing off. Now a little bit of decision time here for the Mustangs. There is just no zip on Bartell's ball, is there? Yeah, you can tell he's struggling. I mean, when you get six games into it and you're still having trouble completing passes, there's obviously some mechanical problems there and, and a confidence issue, I'm sure. Bartell is only hitting on about 47% of his passes, 59 of 126. That was before he went over six today. Gillian lets it go. It's not going to get in the end zone. He has run out just about six inches from the end zone. So, are the Broncos capable of a 99-yard drive? We'll find out. There's a flag on the field at the 45-yard line. Or maybe so we won't have to. The Bronco Television Network Update Scoreboard is brought to you by Sinclair Oil, where you get unbeatable gasoline. Running into the kicker on the defense. That penalty will decline. They'll take the result of the play. First down. The gas gasoline with the quality and performance you can trust. As we take a look at the Sinclair scoreboard, Miami having no problems today with Temple. Well, there's an exciting game. Vanderbilt, Georgia. 2 nothing. Is that a baseball game? Did we get a baseball score there? USC and Notre Dame and tied in the first quarter. Sorry. Hey. Purdue over Wisconsin. Michigan State. Makes La Tech feel pretty good. That was a 46-yard punt, too, that we just saw the Mustangs put the Broncos in deep, deep trouble. Michael and Swenson are in the backfield. Let's see what Ryan did what he does here. Sure, he's going to throw it. He's got Lawrence Beatty out there. Beatty's got it. He's got one more man to beat. Lawrence Beatty. The man's got the angle, Lawrence Beatty, still on his feet down at the one-yard line. Unbelievable. A 98-yard pass, and Beatty couldn't get into the end zone. Jonas Rutledge finally got him, finally had the angle, and ran him down at the one-yard line. Well, I hope you got your answer on that 99-yard drive. At least they picked up 98 of it on the first play. On the first play. Watch Beatty running right down the, the hash marks, and he just outruns the defender. And there's a great go. job there, really? leaping over the man who tried to get him. That was number four, Ruben Moodley, and just grabbed at the one-yard line. <laughs> Donnie Heck? No, that's Brad Law, who can't get in over the left side. Brad Law stopped just inches away. <laughs> Brad Law, redshirt freshman out of Capitol High School in Boise. D.D. Johnson there. Brian Bischoff. Wow, at 5'11", 200 and almost 40 pounds. How we cannot get into the end zone, I don't know. I mean, that, that tells you how stout that front is. And Ryan Dinwiddie takes it himself this time, and there's the touchdown call. Much like against Tulsa last week, Dinwiddie says, hey, I gave you one shot at it. I'll just take it myself. And the 6'1", 190-pound senior out of Elk Grove, California, has the touchdown. Ryan Dinwiddie coming off the field. Remember last week in the second half, he got his bell rung real got hit very, very hard. Not sure when it happened, but he has a little trouble. It was on the first series. First series of the second half. He had a little trouble remembering the rest of the game. Tyler Jones 
point after is good. And Jones is now, or Jones rather, is now 27 of uh, 28 extra points <laughs> on the year. As we watch the long pass again, a perfect spiral from Dr Brian Dinwiddie to Lawrence Beatty, who does a good job leaping over Moodley. And watch the official almost got in yeah. Mabufi's way. Mabufi. Like, slowed him down maybe just one step, or he probably would have had him at the 10. Mabufi just, just got him, and, and then Rutledge finished it off at the one-yard line. Winning his programs in the in the last five years, you wonder why Boise State has had sellouts in every game so far this year. Number four in the winningest programs of the last five years. What a great job they've done. Dinwiddie, by the way, 10 of 14 so far for 244 yards and one touchdown. Ryan Dinwiddie, his mom and dad are here from Northern California. There's, they live about 20 miles south of Sacramento. Three-play, 99-yard drive in just over a minute. Way to call it, Ted. You wanted to know if they could do the 99-yard drive. They gave they you an did. answer quick. Didn't take long either. Rutledge standing in the end zone. He's going to let this one go. He learned his lesson last time. Never even got to the 10-yard line and put SMU in very bad field position. Rutledge, the leading returner in SMU history. Think of all the great backs they've had here. Doak Walker, Eric Dickerson, Craig James. This is the leading kick returner. Jeff Caves is down on the sideline. Jeff, what do you got for us? You know, that reception by Lawrence Beatty from Ryan Dinwiddie now is the longest pass play reception in BSU history. No touchdown, but does replace last year's Lou Fanuki connection with Ryan Dinwiddie. So one more yard and his touchdown and may have set the all-time record. Ted? Bartell gives to Kincaid. This time Kincaid has no place to go. Several players getting up off the bottom. Dane Oldham, one of the players we featured at the start of this game, a senior out of University High School in San Diego. He's a biology major, and he dissected Keelan Kincaid on that one. Second down, make it a long eight. 17 to nothing, Mustangs lead here in the second quarter. Bartell wants to throw. Incomplete, almost intercepted, intended for Rushbrook, knocked away by Gabe Franklin. Franklin was just about half a step slow, or he would have been in the end zone. Well, again, the velocity of the pass that you alluded to earlier is just not there with Bartell, and these defensive backs are just reading him like a book. That's three times Boise State defensive backs have had their hands on his passes. Third down, long eight. Griffin and Cunningham split out wide to the right. Rushbrook wide to the left. SMU 0 for 3 on third down attempts. Bartell under pressure. Rushbrook is out there. Knocked away once again. Alexander there to knock it away. But check that that's Gabe Franklin. Now Franklin, they're, they're working on Gabe. And, you know, surprisingly enough, usually it's... Julius Brown that gets a little bit more of a ball thrown to him than Gabe Franklin because Gabe's usually right there and he was again. Gabe the fastest player on this Broncos team. Running stride for stride with uh, Rushbrook. They don't really time these guys in the 40 that often so I don't know what his 40 time is but it's got to be quick. Ryan Menzel to punt. Look how high this ball goes. And Gilligan has no chance. So he calls for the fair catch at the 41-yard line. And that fair catch, the third one of the game, well, actually the second one of the game, then he let one go beyond him, trying to let it bounce into the end zone. Another 37-yard punt, but those things are so high, there's no ability for Gilligan to return the ball. He's got to call the fair catch. 17 to nothing, Broncos lead it here in Dallas, Texas. A sparse crowd in this beautiful new $60 million stadium that is almost a perfect campus stadium. It's just gorgeous. Dinwiddie still throwing. Plenty of time. Throws complete to Acre. Acre is down to the 49-yard line. Boy, 
nifty little job of keeping his feet in bounds and picking up another two or three yards by T.J. Akery. Tight rope down that sideline. Season numbers for T.J. Akery. 67 yarder coming against Oregon State in Corvallis. Lawrence Beatty wide to the right side. Michael, and Michael just has, he may have gotten a yard, but he has gotten nowhere. Justin Rogers, the redshirt freshman out of Greenville, Texas, 6'4", 233 pounder making the stop. It'll be third down and a yard to go. He had Andy Weldon out there at tight end in front of him, blocking for him, but Weldon really wasn't moving the guy off the line of scrimmage. David Michael just kind of gave him a shove in the back and at least got back up for a half a yard. So Kevin Lousman replaces Weldon at tight end. Ryan Dinwiddie has the first down as he fakes the pitch out. D.D. Johnson from Terrell, Texas. Johnson's nephew, Billy Joe Dupree, played for the Dallas Cowboys here in Dallas. Ted, I don't think we're going to get another playoff in this quarter. The clock winded down under five now. And there it goes. The end of the first quarter here in the beautiful Gerald Ford Stadium. Broncos of Boise State, 17. The Mustangs of SMU, nothing. Can the Mustangs come back? Find out. Stay with us. Welcome back to Dallas, Texas. I'm Ted Dawson along with Larry Pulowski, the Boise State Mustangs, leading at 17 to nothing. So far in the first quarter, the Broncos, 27 plays for 284 yards. That's better than 10 yards a play. Only 54 yards for SMU in 13 plays, and 42 of them came on one play. First and 10. Dinwiddie, all the time in the world. Sets, throws, has a man wide open, and Gilligan is down to the 21-yard line. And I know SMU is, uh, has played Texas Tech, an outstanding passing attack, but I'm not sure they've faced as, as many multiple uh, offenses as they've seen here as we take a look at the Washington Trust Bank first quarter stats just 32 rushing yards for the Broncos but 252 passing yards so far Dinwiddie fakes to Donnie Heck gives to Acre and Acre is nailed right at the 20 yard line Darren College was out there trying to block but there were just too many defenders. Melvin Williams was there, Alan Adamy. Adamy's a very mobile defensive lineman. I mean, the guy wears number 14, which tells you, I don't think he came here as a defensive end, but he looks like he grew into one. 6'4", 276-pound junior. Acre, Beatty, split out wide to the right side. To Michael, going the left way. Or check if that's Lee Marks. Lee Marks down to about the five-yard line. Now they say he ran out of bounds right outside the six. So Lee Marks has had a couple of big carries in this game. Ruben Moodley just checked out of the game. He hurt his hand on that play as he was trying to get Marks out of bounds. That block right there, something happened to his arm or his hand as Marks goes out of bounds at the seven. When Darren College hits you, yeah, a lot things, of things, hurt. things tend to happen. First and goal again for the Broncos as McPherson goes wide to the right side. Jerry Smith comes wide to the left. Lundeen goes into the backfield. Michael, nothing. And Mel Melvin Williams, the junior out of Elysian Fields, Texas. Well, Michael got Making three yards. Stop. Three yards there just because he put his head down and you know kind of drove those legs as hard as he could. That's about the only way he's been able to get any yardage on the inside of that line of scrimmage. 17 to nothing our score. It's been all Broncos so far as Gilligan and McPherson go out wide to the right side. Swenson and Michael are in the backfield. Dinwiddie. And is sacked by number 38, D.D. Johnson. Well, that play was a run all the way. He was going to try to bootleg that thing into the end zone, but SMU would have no part of it. Johnson is a senior out of Terrell, Texas. Six foot, 223 pounder. Another Mustang down on the field at the five-yard line. There's Dee Dee. 
13-25 left to play. That's number 14, Alum Adamy. The 6'4", 276-pound junior who's injured. Boy, he's really hurt. Thirteen twenty-five left to play. Seventeen to nothing. Our score. Boise State leads it, and Adam, he's not moving. You want me to look that way? Uh, no, uh, move this way. Know what we're stopping for? I didn't see him go down. Did you, Paul? I didn't. But there's four members of the training staff for SMU out on the field. Right. We're going to take a break, and we'll see if uh, Jeff Caves can find out what happened down on the field. Score is 17 to nothing. Boise State on top of the SMU Mustangs. Welcome back to Dallas, Texas on a beautiful 74 degree fall day and the Boise State Mustangs leading 17 to nothing here with better than 13 minutes left to play in the uh, second quarter. Jeff Caves down on the sidelines, Jeff. Hey, Ted, you and Larry have been talking about Lee Marks having a pretty good first half. He's had some big plays. I know Larry at practice this week recognized that anybody that wasn't holding on to the football, Donnie Heck specifically, wasn't going to get much practice or playing time. So he's had some good plays. Now let's see who gets the ball in the critical red zone. Ted? Well, David Michael is the first guy to get it. It was uh, the uh, Boise State was three of five on third down conversions. They just had a big one there. It did not make the first down. It'll be fourth down. Pass to uh, David Michael. And they're not going to bring Tyler Jones into the game, so they're going again on fourth down in the red zone. That's Michael's 12th reception of the year. Last time they tried this, they didn't make it. So we'll see what Chris Peterson, the offensive coordinator, pulls out of his bag of tricks. Double tight end. Dinwiddie, plenty of time. Now he's going to run it. He's got some running room. He can't get away from Rutledge, though, as Rutledge runs him out of bounds. It'll be close. But not close enough. The Mustangs have held on fourth down for the second time this afternoon. Bless him, you just has too much team speed on this defense to be able to try to run this ball into the end zone. Dinwiddie thinks about right here he can do it, but Rutledge isn't going to have any part of it. Nice forearm by uh, Ryan. Bartell at the four-yard line. And you can bet the paycheck that this is going to go to Keelan Kincaid. The eye back. Well, not before Paul Allen jumps off sides. That's that's what the third of third one of those we've had today. It would be if. It, it is. Third time. Offsides on the Broncos. And Paul Allen was right over the center. Now, you know, as a defensive lineman, you know, you're supposed to look at the ball, and when the ball moves, you move. Especially when you're right over the top of the center, you would think you could see that. Paul getting a little anxious there. Darren Brown is the fullback. I still think you can bet the paycheck that Kincaid's going to get this one. And there he is. Paycheck is safe. Berger almost knocked that ball out of there. Boy, what a job Travis Berger has done this year. The senior out of Coos Bay, Oregon. Came into this ball game with a total of 21 tackles. Just soft-spoken guy gets the job done. Started out as a safety and has uh, grown and and gotten strong enough to where he's now playing an outside linebacker position. Second down and three. Kincaid. Mike Williams there to make the stop. With the exception of that one play, Williams and Oldham, Paul Allen and Julius Roberts have done a pretty good job up front, at least containing this guy. But Kincaid busted that one for 42 yards. Ryan Kincaid has checked into the ball game, so there'll be a double tight end formation. On, It'll be go, third man. down and about a yard. Come on now, let's drive off the ball. 
Andrew Browning is into the defensive lineup for the Broncos. Bartell to Kincaid. Boy, he's got nowhere to run. He didn't get it. He lost the yardage. He on lost one. a couple of yards. Great job by the left side of the defensive Bronco line. Well, I see Wes Nurse getting up off the bottom of that pile, too, so they were bringing a blitz. Dane Oldham, Mike Williams right there. Excellent job as you watch it again. Good penetration up the field. will stop a running play every time. Gabe Franklin's, Gabe Franklin's up there. there yeah. Wes Nurse is in on that play. Avalos, Andy Avalos. Allen, they're all there. See if Gilligan will get a chance to run one back. Well, he hasn't had a chance yet. These things are so high that he just can't find any room to run. Ryan Mensel, low snap and almost blocked. Gilligan will get a return, but not for much. Boy, is he a tough kid. He just bounces right back up, doesn't he? Amazing. Just gets nailed and bounces right back. Boise State leads it 17 to nothing, but they've got great field position. Don't go away. Will they score on this next drive? Ted, our jack-in-the-box fan of the game is going to be one of the many, many Bronco fans that traveled here to Dallas today to see this ball game. There's probably four or 500 Boise State fans over on the other side of the stadium. That's your jack-in-the-box fan of the game. Dinwiddie throwing long. And flags go down as Jerry Smith was interfered with by Jonas Rutledge. Or there was interference. We'll see where how it's called. Well, the ball was thrown out of bounds. Pass interference. I think the receiver got on the defense. The 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic SMU. first down. He was, he was able to get his hands on the ball, so they're not going to call thrown over the top of their head. So that will be the penalty against SMU. Let's take a look at it here on the break. Oh, yeah, clearly. Oh, yeah, clearly. We can, he doesn't know where the ball is, but he runs into the receiver. If he's looking back for the ball, he might get away with that. But certainly when you're when you're not looking for the ball, you're never going to get away with it. First and ten. Ball at the 25-yard line. Acre, Beatty, wide to the right side. Donnie Heck. Sticks his head down and picks up about seven or eight yards before Melvin Williams makes the stop. And that's really the first running play, Ted, that the Broncos have gotten any positive yards up the middle of the field. Donnie Heck hit that hole in a hurry, and the O-line did a good job moving him off the ball for once. Second down, call it three. Well, I don't know how they keep track of the huddle down there. That, Three, four players change every play. Gilligan, McPherson goes on a slot on the right side. Donnie Heck again turns the corner. Touchdown, Donnie Heck. Well, that'll make up for some fumbles. Wow, Donnie Heck showing you some speed turning that corner. The offensive line and tight ends did a good job sealing off the outside. He only had one man to beat, and he did it. Donnie Heck showing you some speed into the end zone. 9-24 left to play in the first half, and Donnie Heck makes the score 23 to nothing. Heck, out of Eagle High School, a social science major, picks up his third touchdown of the year. Tyler Jones, point after, and it's... 24 to nothing. As you watch, Donnie Heck, the kid from Eagle, gets some great blocking around the left side. Well, you can see the seal off there. College does a good job. Schumann's down there making a block, at least occupying somebody so they can't go get Donnie. And he just turned on the gas as he went around the corner. Heck got in some serious trouble during uh, practice this week. Was set down by the coaching staff for fumbling. Now he and Coach Hawk had a little verbal discussion, and that's usually not a good idea. You're never going to win those when you're arguing with the head coach. That's right. Trent Lundeen makes a nice block on Alvin the Boofy. Donnie Heck shows you the tough kid he is, and boy, I tell you, I've, I've given him a little grief sometimes about his speed, but he sure turned on the gas around there. And then the Sinclair scoreboard back up again. Bronco Television Network update scoreboard brought to you by Sinclair Oil, where you get unbeatable gasoline with the quality and performance you can trust. 
Well, Texas, after that embarrassment a week ago, taking it out on Iowa State. Be an interesting game. Oklahoma State against Texas Tech. High scoring offense. Let's see how the uh, Hawaii Warriors do off the island today in Ruston. Rutledge, three yards deep. No. He learned his lesson. <laughs> He's not going There's anywhere. no way. Brad Hall right down there on top of him. Cam Hall there. You could almost see a, a resignation or a disgust by Rutledge. He just took the knee and uh, I'm not going anywhere. SMU has had some spankings this year. They got beat 58 to 10 by Texas Tech. Been a close game at Baylor, lost 10 to 7. Got ripped by Oklahoma State, 52 to 6. Lost close to Nevada, 12 to 9. Very young team. That graphic there showed you how young these guys are. Bartell to throw. And finally completes a pass. To number 18, Jamon Cleveland, the freshman out of Baytown, Texas. That is the first completion for Bartell this afternoon. Gerald Alexander on the stop. Here's an isolation shot of Cleveland. Makes the catch, picks up a couple yards after as he goes by Alexander. No wrap up there by Cam Hall. Second down, still a yard to go. Kincaid, it did not make the first down, I don't think. So it'll be third down and still a few inches to go. I think you can get that paycheck back out again and pretty much figure out who's going to carry this ball. Number 20, Deron Brown checks in at the fullback spot. Brown, you'd have lost the paycheck as he gets the call. So it's a good decoy. They just barely got it over the 30, so that'll give them the first down. Julius Roberts trying to do a little officiating, but the real officials want no part of it. First, you have to have a striped shirt to be able to do that. I think that's only their second. Well, that's actually their third first down of the game because they got one on two penalties, two Bronco penalties, but it's only the second one they've earned. Bartell, who's had nothing but problems throwing the ball. Under pressure, gets it off, completes. That's Cleveland again. They've done him twice now. Maybe they should have found Jamon Cleveland earlier because number 18 is getting some yardage when he catches the ball. Baytown, Texas. That, that's only his third catch of the year. He had one catch coming into this game. Does a nice job after the catch in getting away from the Broncos. If he cuts that to the outside, I think he may score. He had a lot of yardage to the outside, but he elected to cut back to the inside. Rushbook goes wide to the left side. Trey Griffin comes wide to the right. Four wide receivers in the pattern this time. Bartell throws across the middle, complete. To Matt Rushbrook. Well, good for seven or eight yards. So Bartell has suddenly found an arm to, well, you to go see, with his running game. As you look at the three passes that he's just completed, they've all been of a very quick one to three step drop variety. Gets back there, slings the ball out. He's not a classic drop back passer, although he's a big kid, he's 6'5". He, he really doesn't have that kind of an arm that you would think he would have. Kincaid has the first down, breaks a tackle and trips and falls or he was gone. Down at the 35-yard line. Well, the Bronco defense has given up a couple of pretty good-sized runs to Kincaid, but you can see how strong he is. And, boy, he is lucky that the line tripped him up because he did have a lot of green ahead of him. Good drive by the Mustangs of SMU. Has to be disheartening, though, to see the few people in the stands here. Bartell throwing long, almost intercepted. Chris Carr was down there. Pass was intended for Matt Rushbrook. 
and way overthrown, and Chris Carr was the closest man to it. And the reason it was overthrown is the Broncos came with a blitz that time, and there was pressure on Bartell. He had to throw that ball before his receiver had cleared the defender. And Chris Carr was back there, got both hands on it again. That's the fourth or fifth time the Broncos have had their hands on the ball and haven't picked it off. Second down and ten. Bartell under pressure. Dumps it off. And intercepted by Cam Hall. Cam Hall has his third interception of the year as he takes it across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Now you talk about a fluke interception. That ball bounces off the back of the offensive linemen that are coming out on a screen play. Trying to set up the screen. Bounces off their back and right into the arm of Cam Hall. Let's see if you can see the bounce. There it is. It bounces right. Off Kincaid. Uh, off of his foot. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, you talk about luck. If it weren't for bad luck, the Mustangs wouldn't have any luck at all. It's 24 to nothing. How long do you leave your first string in? Well, certainly for the first half. I think Coach Hawkins is uh, pretty much a three-quarter guy. Yeah. Just depending on how it goes, but that's been his history. See if Dinwiddie tries to go long on this first play. They like to, they like to try a little lightning after a turnover. Jerry Smith. Alvin Nabufi makes the stop, but not before Smith picks up another 20 yards. Doesn't Jerry Smith just make the, the routine look interesting? I mean, he looks he, like a gazelle going really down does. the field. He is a, a very, very flexible player. This ball it looked like maybe a little bit behind him. He got back there and caught, got his hands behind the ball, put it in, picked up good yardage, and now SMU calls timeout. SMU is just being flattened on virtually every play. There is six minutes and one second left to play in this first half. It's been all Boise State. The Broncos lead it 24 to nothing. Be sure to stay tuned at halftime for the Treasure Valley Dodge Dealers Halftime Report. We'll have all the scores and highlights of today's college action. It's the Dodge Halftime Report coming up in just a few minutes. Jeff Cave, down on the sidelines. Hey, you talked about the team and not anybody being happy with this crowd. What about Gerald Ford? He put up 20 of the $60 million. He and Lamar Hunt to get this beautiful facility built. Could Conference USA be the answer for SMU to become a mid-major power? Ted? T.J. Acre is the answer right now for the Boise State Mustangs as he picks up nine yards, crossing the 30 down to about the 27-yard line before Desmond Jones. The freshman out of Carter High School here in Dallas makes the stop. Ted, one other thing we're going to do at the Dodge Halftime Report is draw for our lucky Hawaiian vacation flyaway winner. All right. Are you and I eligible for that? No, we are not eligible for that because we are employees of uh, the Bronco Television Network. Oh. So we are not eligible, but all of the people that submitted their entries, and we had over 3,000 yeah. entries for this thing, we're, Tammy Doty is going to draw that name live at uh, our Dodge Halftime Report. So stay tuned for that, too. You could be a lucky winner. Desmond Jones, uh, the giant 6'1", 294-pound freshman who made that tackle, goes limping off the field. You know, I promise you, Poe, there were more people at high school games around Dallas last night than there are here today. I, I have no doubt that that is accurate. Second down and three. Dinwiddie to Michael. Michael has nowhere to go. Well, Tony McPherson did a, a, I'm going to be quite blunt here, a very poor job of blocking on that play. Jonas Rutledge came up and made the stop, and that was a very weak attempt by McPherson, and he's checking out of the game now. Third down and still two yards to go for the Broncos. Lawrence Beatty, Tim Gilligan wide to the right side. T.J. Acre wide to the left. Dinwiddie on the option. I don't think he got it. He didn't. But I don't think it matters. I mean, we've already seen Coach Hawkins. Is, he's adamant about this fourth down thing. Unless he wants to practice field goal kicking, I think we're going to see another fourth down attempt. 0 for 2 so far. Brent Carrington, a redshirt freshman out of Dallas, making the stop. Oh, 
Fourth down, Dinwiddie gives to Heck. Heck no. does not make it. A misdirection play that just went nowhere. Melvin Williams smelled it out. And the Broncos are turned away 0 for 3 on fourth down conversion tries. Well, Donnie Heck was trying to run that thing off tackle. And uh, Andy Weldon got knocked five yards back into the backfield. It's awful hard to get a playoff when your line of scrimmage moves backwards. Coming up in the second half, we'll name our Connecticut Water Systems Player of the Game. Be sure to stay tuned for another sparkling Bronco performance. Sponsored by Connecticut Quality Water Systems. Richard Bartell, who finally started completing some passes in his last series. Rolls out, under pressure, throws, complete to Rushbrook. And Rushbrook has about six or seven yards. Gerald Alexander making the stop for the Broncos. Alexander getting more and more playing time as this season goes on at the cornerback position. The Broncos almost get to Bartell, but not quite. And he did take a hit as Julius Roberts put him on his wallet. Second down and four. Bobbled uh -oh. in the backfield. And Bartell ends up with it. Bartell has carried the ball 12 times this year. Well, that play was designed to go to Kincaid yeah. up the middle. But uh, Bartell lost the handle. Blake Warren, a freshman out of Ark, Texas. Little 5'7", 170-pound scooter, checks into the game on third down and three. Nickel defense for the Broncos. Broncos coming with a blitz. Quick toss. Incomplete. Blake Warren had it in his hands and couldn't hold on. And he had enough for the first down, too. Chris Carr was there on the defense, but that was the first down that uh, the freshman will have to watch uh, in the film series come Monday. Menzel, the punter, will check in for the Mustangs to kick this ball away. Menzel, a sophomore out of Lockhart, Texas. Gilligan got his first return last time. Gilligan averages 13.6 yards of punt return. Short kick. And it'll be downed at around the 40-yard line. You know, they're not marking that ball where it should be marked either. I'm sorry, Ted. They, that ball was touched in, outside the 40-yard line, and the defensive player pushed it forward and then downed it. Well, that, that, that's, not, that's not where you mark the ball. Well, yeah, the, yeah, they're marking it outside the 40. Good. Now, the, the official on the top of the field caught that. That was That's the correct place. It should have been marked at the 41 where it is now. Good. This broadcast is copyrighted by Boise State University. I want to remind you that all rights are reserved. And that was only a 22-yard punt. Dinwiddie fakes the give to Michael. Boy, he's under no pressure at all. Acre is down there. Pass overthrown. Alvin, or Rolando Humphrey on the defense. You're right about the number of players that SMU uses. When I was charting film this week, I went through a page and a half of paper trying to get all the numbers yeah. and guys down that were on the field for this team. Well, he's got, they've got all these young kids that they're just trying to get some playing time. Pretty good half, would you say? 310 yards. Dinwiddie. Oh, Lawrence Beatty's going to have to watch that one in the film session. Perfect pass from Dinwiddie and Beatty, who has excellent hands. Tried to catch it with a shoulder pass. Yeah, he did. He tried to bring that one in and gave it a, a let it hit his pads, but he didn't get his hands out to catch the ball. You see, he tries to cradle it. Bounces right off that sternum pad. There was a hand that flashed in front of him, but that was very catchable. Third down. Pass for Gilligan. Yes. Fans say no. But Gilligan has the first down. Nice diving catch by Tim Gilligan. 
What a game he had against La Tech with those 16 catches. Watch it here. Oh, he got that. The official was right down there on the sidelines, and he saw it. Watch it again. Same guy that caught the correct spot on where that punt was touched also picked out that reception. First and ten. The screen pass to Michael. They must just do nothing but defense David Michael all week because they've got him scouted out perfectly. D.D. Johnson making the stop. Johnson, number 38. D.D. Lee, number 35. And Bischoff, number 46. Those three linebackers that we said are so integral in this defense. But the defensive line's done a real nice job for SMU tonight also. Tim Gilligan checks in late to the lineup. Four wide receivers. Dinwiddie under no pressure. Throws to Acre. And Acre has the first down at the 30-yard line. Still going as he fights his way to the 28. Gets a pat on the back from Tim Gilligan. Joe Sturdivant and Rolando Humphrey on the stop. You know, Acre's got to be one of the toughest 172-pound receivers that I think I've ever seen. Him and Gilligan both. I mean, they're both fearless. They go across the middle they into run, traffic. They run perfect routes. They run great routes. And then look how strong they are after the catch. It takes three guys to bring him down at 172 pounds. Is that possible? You know, that's that weight room training again. Beatty is in motion. I think we're passing this ball. Pass. And right to Rutledge, and he didn't yeah. catch it. He was gone. He's pointing the other way. He's saying, yeah, I would have gone with it. Well, you got to catch it first. Yeah, that's right. I don't know who Ryan was throwing that one to. Acre was in the same county, but that was about it. Barely. Take a look now as the clock ticks down with the network group two-minute clock. For all your computing solutions, if you've got a problem, the network group can fix it. Call them today. Ryan Dinwiddie, 19 of 25 for 341 yards. Broncos have 409 total yards in the first half. Dinwiddie, so it's complete to Jerry Smith. Touchdown, Smith. Wow, Jerry Smith just dissects the middle of the defensive backfield and runs straight into the end zone. Nobody in sight. The man-to-man -man coverage does not work for the Mustangs. But once again, an absolutely perfect route by Jerry Smith. He and Acre Gilligan, these guys run perfect routes. And how about that throw? I mean, that thing was, again, right there on the on a line. Just a rope right to the receiver. Tyler Jones. Bad snap. But he got it down, got it up, and good. Good job by Mike Sanford. Backup quarterback gets that ball. It tumbled up to him. He picked it up, put it back down. Very nice job. Watch the pass play again as the pass was a little behind Smith, but he just did a great job of grabbing it with his hands, and there's nobody close to it. Well, and that's a great feeling as a receiver. When you turn and look upfield and there's nothing but green grass, or in this case, green field turf. San Jose State coming into Bronco Stadium next week. Of course, San Jose State has that outstanding special teams player who lost his leg two years ago. Came back and is playing for San Jose State. They played against SMU last week. What a, what a great story he is. It, it would be fun just to come out and see him play. And unfortunately for you and I, we're pretty much, this is it, baby. We're done broadcasting football this year because the ESPN2 crew is going to take over for three of those remaining games at BYU, at Fresno, Fresno. and at Hawaii. We don't get to go to Hawaii. What is that all about? Now. Well. Hawaii's Hawaii. But two winners are going to go, or at least we have a trip for, two, trip for two for somebody. Maybe they'll take me or you with them. And we got to come to Dallas. I doubt it. Huh? Better stakes in Dallas than there are in Hawaii. I guarantee yeah. you that. I'm not going to Hawaii for stakes, I assure you of that. <laughs> 31 to nothing. And remember, the Broncos are 0 for 3 on fourth down. What could it have been? Rutledge. Three yards deep. Fumbles it now. He doesn't want any part of it now. With Donnie Heck bearing down on him, it'll be first and 10. Mustangs at the 20-yard line with 48 seconds left to play. And Phil Bennett may just take a knee and say, let's get out of here with our lives. He's already got one of his top defensive players injured. 
Well, if he takes a knee, then he would be opposed to Gandhi because we know that Gandhi does not take a knee. Absolutely. Boy, is he taking some heat around the country for that. Coach Hawkins has been referred to as Coach Gandhi and papers around the country. But I'll tell you what, uh, I admire the guy. He shows passion, and I love people who, who are passionate about what they do, and Dan Hawkins certainly is. Old saying in our business, bad publicity is better than no publicity at all. Kincaid tackled behind the line of scrimmage, and Dan Oldham has stepped up once again. Well, you have a habit of picking out the good guys uh, in your in your pregame show, and you uh, you knew the guys who were going to step up. Well, when you look at this offense for SMU, you're not scared of the passing game, but you're certainly scared of Kincaid, and we can see why. He's broken a couple of, of runs off, one for 42, and another one for about 12. He's capable of doing that almost every play. So defensive line, obviously, is going to be important. Stay tuned at halftime for the Treasure Valley Dodge Dealers Halftime Report. We'll have all the scores and highlights of today's college action. It's the Dodge Halftime Report coming up in just a few minutes. The caveman's down on the field. How how uh, how's it look down there, Jeff? Well, it's a little bit warm, but it's a little breeze here and there. But I'll tell you what, Boise State's got, what, two more timeouts, guys? And uh, Hawkins is up 31-0 and insisting on getting the ball back to make something happen. Now, I know Hawk wants to attack. He wants to put points on the board. But these are things that fans don't understand, you know, and coaches sometimes maybe let it get out of hand. But we'll see what happens. I'll talk to him about it in just about 40 seconds. Ted? Hey, Jeff, he doesn't find a critic here. I, I – if – you know, you're, you're paid to play the game. You play it full out all the way. I, I agree with Dan Hawkins there. We better remind Jeff Caves, too. He's getting a little sweaty down there. You know, get some fluids in you down there, Jeff. Get a drink of water. You know, take care of yourself down there. Kincaid goes over his left tackle. Picks about uh, six or seven yards. And the Broncos call timeout again. Wes Nurse on the bottom of that pile. Nice run by Kincaid. Larry, as you and I have talked, I used to broadcast the SMU games after they came off the death penalty. We were playing Houston. Houston's going for 100 points. Everybody's all upset that Houston's going for 100 points. And I couldn't understand why they were upset. Everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to play their best. Everybody wants to score. Why get upset about it? I want to remind you to tune in every Sunday afternoon for Broncomania starring Dan Hawkins. All the action starts at 5.30 live from the Ram Restaurant on Broadway. You can ask the coach questions in person, so don't miss it. Broncomania starring Dan Hawkins every Sunday at 5 p.m. right here on the Bronco Television Network. Show stars Dan Hawkins and you. You're invited to come out, be part of the show. Have a good meal. Enjoy some great action on the big screen. And I suppose we don't have to remind our viewers that last week at home against Tulsa, Boise State was up 20 to nothing at halftime. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there won't be a meaningful second half to follow. I think you're going get, to get a chance to see some players you haven't seen much of this, this year other than at Idaho State. Bartell to Kincaid, and Kincaid does not have the first down. Well, the Broncos going for the jugular with these timeouts, aren't they? The Broncos are going to get it back. There's 28 seconds left to play. And the Mustangs are going to be forced to punt. Well, the strategy works. The strategy works, assuming that SMU doesn't go for it on fourth down and pick up the first. Which I would seriously doubt at the 28-yard line. Well, Menzel's coming in, so I assume that's not going to be the case. And he is the punter. It'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, a return the Broncos go with. I would bet we see a pretty much full-out block. Full-out rush, yeah. Remember, during the Dodge Halftime Report, Tammy Doty is going to draw the lucky winner for our Hawaiian flyaway vacation. You and a guest will get to go to Hawaii, a few days at Waikiki, tickets to the game. Man. How can you go wrong with that? Absolutely. What a great job Tammy Doty does. She is so personable. She's just like being one of the neighbors to come over to give, give the news to you. She's just cute as a bug. She is. That's a Texas saying, isn't it? Well, it's actually a bug's behind. Oh, but uh, <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> Gilligan. Fair catch. And the Broncos will be 76 yards away with 20 seconds. 46-yard punt that time by Mensel. That was a nice one. And that was hot. Yeah, Gilligan doesn't have an opportunity to return most of those. 
Well, let's see what uh, Dan Hawkins and Chris Peterson come up with here. I think he was hoping for either a little better field position or the possibility of blocking that kick, but 75 yards to go. Although, hey, we saw him pick up 98 on one just a little while ago. And Beatty is out wide to the right side again. Going from the gun. SMU in the prevent defense. Dinwiddie, plenty of time. Throwing long. Jerry Smith is there, a diving catch. What a great catch by Smith across the 50-yard line. Wow, this kid just continues to amaze today. Uh, he must like this Dallas air because he is playing out of his gourd. 12 seconds left to play. Dinwiddie trips himself and is hit as he lets go of the ball. Five seconds left to play. Jonas Rutledge came on the blitz, and Rutledge is now hurting. Rutledge has injured his shoulder. Now he and Dinwiddie are hurting. Dinwiddie's getting up a little wearily also. He took a big hit, and there was a quite a collision at the end of this play. We're going to isolate Ryan as he trips. He trips himself. Then he gets drilled, and you can see he got hit right in the ribs, and then Rutledge looked like might have dislocated his shoulder or, or separated his shoulder a little bit. Second down and 10. Ball at the 48-yard line. I can see Rutledge down there working his hands. He's got a stinger. He's got uh, the bumblebees all up and down his arm. And, and he's going to take a knee. Oh, before Dinwiddie gets killed, he's just going to kill the clock. Flag. Oh, please. Three seconds left to play. Wow. I mean, that is 395 a, yards. That's a great day. On the offense, that penalty is declined. Yeah. Boy, SMU was starting to go off the field. We're going to have to snap it one more time. Oh, they, they, no, they, they start, they start uh, the clock after the penalty was refused, and that's going to end the first half of play here in Dallas. It has been a total runaway for the Boise State Broncos as they have uh, caught up to a disheartened SMU football team this afternoon. They lead it by a score of 31 to nothing on a record-setting performance by Ryan Dinwiddie. You saw him make the uh, incredible records against Louisiana Tech, but those are going to be nothing if Dinwiddie continues to play, but there's, i got to believe, serious doubt that he will continue to play. Well, I think as dinged up as he was last week and, and took a couple pretty good hits already here today, I'm not sure we're going to see much out of Ryan Dinwiddie, and I, I see Jeff Caves getting in position with the coach, so why don't we go down and see what he's got. Jeff? All right, Hawk, first half pretty impressive. What was left to accomplish that didn't get done? 31 points looks pretty good. Well, yeah, and again, that's the point side of it. The other point is we missed a couple of times down here in the red zone. We would like to got it in there, so uh, still have to clean up a few of those issues. What about second half? Looks like Ryan got a shot there at the end. Does that affect what you do substitution-wise if this continues? No, you know, we'll let him play and we'll do our deal. I mean, at some point you got to let guys play, but uh, he's fine. I mean, he took a shot right there and he probably what he gets, I guess, from falling over his own feet. <laughs> All right, thanks, Doc. <laughs> Ted? He, he didn't sound much like Gandhi there, Boy, did he? No, no sympathy for the man. He's tough. We're at halftime in Dallas, Texas. The Broncos lead it by a score of 31 to nothing. Who will play in the second half? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to Gerald Ford Stadium on the campus of Southern Methodist University, where it's been all Boise State. The high-powered Broncos have just demolished the Mustangs of Southern Methodist, who have still have never recovered from a 15-year death penalty. As you take a look, right off the beginning, Tim Gilligan with his first touchdown catch of the year. And then Lawrence Beatty from the one-yard line. Look at this effort. Wow, what a run after the catch, too. I mean, Lawrence Beatty shakes off two guys. We get a little referee interference there to help him along, and he gets all the way down to the one. Junior college transfer with his longest catch ever as a collegiate. And then Donnie Heck picks up the touchdown run. Donnie Heck with a burst of speed around and picks up another six. A great catch there by Jerry Smith, and the senior from Tampa takes it right up the middle, and the Broncos lead by 31 points here. And look at the passing yards for Ryan Dinwiddie in the first half. 
you know, he had, uh, uh, the Broncos had over 700 yards at Louisiana Tech. Dinwiddie had 500 yards. Look, look at these passing yards in the first half here. Now that's incredible. And you look at third down conversions, that's a little misleading because they're also 0 for 3 on fourth down conversions. But with that time of possession and the number of yards they've racked up, they are just absolutely dismantling this Mustang team. Well, we said before this game started that the Broncos were a little embarrassed offensively by what happened in the second half against Tulsa. Ryan Dinwiddie, I think, was personally embarrassed by the concussion, the fact he wasn't able to see. He was uh, booed for the first time. I think he was very embarrassed, and he came out with a vengeance here this afternoon. You see the Mustangs of SMU coming out of the tunnel. Can they come back? We'll find out after this. Welcome back to Dallas, Texas, as you take a look at this beautiful campus here on Highland Park, Texas, suburb uh, right in the middle of Dallas, as a matter of fact as we take you down to the sideline and Jeff Caves in a halftime report. Jeff, what do you got? Well, you know, one reaction I couldn't get from Dan Hawkins is finishing a game perfect. He's talked about it enough that he wants to put together a full four-quarter effort. Certainly, you can say the first team is going to have an opportunity to do it, but I think what's <coughs> going to happen here is the second teamers are going to have to continue what the first teamers have done, and that means a shutout on defense, no turnovers on offense, and continued execution of the passing game. It could get ugly. I don't see SMU with much enthusiasm coming back onto the field for this half. Ted? Jeff, uh, uh, that's exactly what I saw as they came out. Their heads were hanging. Uh, this is a team that's badly beaten. Now, uh, they will get the ball to start the second half. Oh, th they might do better to defer till next year. Yeah, I, I won't touch that one, but they haven't had a good opportunity at this kickoff return yet today. I'm sure Rutledge would like to get one crack at getting this thing back upfield. Tyler Jones. Not going to happen on that kick. Is not going to let him do it. Five yards on an angle into the end zone. That's as perfect a kickoff as you can get. Now, virtually no way to return that. The return was set up to go to the middle. When you pin him into that corner like that, it just you can't get back to the wedge. Well, let's see what Coach Phil Bennett came up with at halftime. Bartell coming back into the game. I thought we might see maybe a little shake up there too with Tate Wallace who's gotten a, a few snaps. 17 for 37 so far is Tate Wallace in passing. Kincaid gets the first call. Gets around the corner. And Julius Brown knocks him out of bounds after a gain of two. And again a good job by the Broncos to string that thing out down the line of scrimmage. Get it to the sidelines and then let the out of bounds make the tackle. To give him three yards on forward progress. It'll be second and seven. 78 yards. And it, again, remember, he got 42 of it on one carry. Pretty much the game plan we thought we'd see out of this offense when we started this broadcast. It hasn't changed yet. Triple wide receivers on the left side this time. Rushbrook goes in motion. Bartell being chased. Gets away from Oldham. Incomplete, intended for the tight end. Big Trent Hinsher out of Houston, Texas. A guy who was actually born in London, England. Lived the first six years of his life in London. 6'5", 242 pounders was down there. But uh, Bartell missed him badly. Gets forced out of the pocket. Julius Roberts doesn't keep contained. Allows him to get the ball off. It's almost intercepted by the Broncos. Sideline, or that sidearm toss by Bartell. Third down and seven. SMU one of eight in third down conversions. Gerald Alexander, or that's Randy Avalos coming on the blitz and down he goes. Dane Oldham. Dane Oldham, the man getting credited with the sack. Well, they did bring an all out blitz that time too. Avalos was coming, Corey Hall was coming, but Dane Oldham, the big tackle, makes the sack. That's his. He's got two and a half sacks so far this year. That's his uh, his second one. I mean, he was virtually untouched. He just came right up the middle. There were so many guys coming that there were not enough blockers to take them all, and Dane Oldham came free. Mensel will kick right from the goal line. Gilligan, no fair catch, and down he goes. Great job that time 
by number 39, Ted Barnhart, who got down quickly, made a quick tackle on Gilligan, a 40-yard punt and no return. But great field position at the 45-yard line for Ryan Dinwiddie and the Bronco offense. Lawrence Beatty's coming in. Indeed it is Dinwiddie that comes off the bench. And true to Coach Hawkins' words, he's going to get him a couple more series here in anyway. Dinwiddie, quick toss to Beatty. And he gets about five yards to the 50-yard line. D.D. Lee and Alvin Nabufi with the stop. I like to watch Lawrence Beatty after he catches the ball. He does a yeah. nice job of getting this thing up the field. That five-yard pass there just took Ryan to the 400-yard mark. 400 yards in one half and one play. Wow. 22 of 30 with 400 yards, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. His pass efficiency rating must be about 250. Mark Odebacoon splits wide to the right side this time. That's Lausba who went... And again, Michael just has no place to run. D.D. Johnson and Kevin Lausma have a little misunderstanding down on the field. Until Rusty Colburn tells you to go away. <laughs> Colburn's a big dude, isn't he? Laus Lausma doesn't need to argue. He can outsmart him. <laughs> He's about a 3-5 grade point average. I know he can't outrun him, so he better outsmart him. Outstanding student. Criminal justice major out of Decatur High School in Federal Way, Washington. Third down and five. Quick toss, complete. Acre almost broke it free. And now a late flag comes down. It's going to be a personal foul against somebody. The linesman from way out across the field. What was that, sideline? Is that what, is that what he called? Sideline interference? Here's Akery on the top of your screen catching the ball right at the hash mark. And again, look at the strength in his legs. Goes over the top of one defender and almost breaks free. If it hadn't been for Rolando Humphrey, he'd have been gone. Didn't would he? Fakes the give to Michael. Now he's in trouble. And actually may have picked up a yard or two for Don Aremia Stansberry. The 6'2", 245-pound sophomore out of El Paso makes the stop. Give him two yards on forward progress. It'll be second and eight. I know they've got a game plan in, and they want to run the plays that are in the game plan. And obviously running Ryan is in the game plan, but... It banged up as he's been the last couple weeks. I don't think I want to see him carrying the ball very much. God, he looks like he's limping a little bit. Then what he sets, throws, complete. Acre is close to first down yardage at the 20-yard line. Quite a move out there, huh? See that? Just a little juke step. Gets him down to the 20-yard line. Beautiful move after the catch. So many of these receivers do that very efficiently. Fourth 400-yard passing game. That is a new Boise State record. Nobody's done it as much as Ryan's done it. Defense, yes, yes. Have another 500-yard game. Four, three, two, give wide to the right. McPherson goes in a slot. Michael has some running room. Michael at the five-yard line. Knocked down by D.D. Johnson. Johnson just got his legs, too, because I thought D. Mike, once he broke through that initial line of scrimmage, was gone. But they did a good job getting a hold of the ankles and getting him down at the five. Watch him go off the left side of the formation. Off tackle, huge crease for him to run through. And just at the last second, they get him corralled. First and goal, five-yard line. Three tight ends in the ball game. Ryan Dinwiddie, touchdown. Great fake by Dinwiddie. As he fakes it to Beatty, going around the right side, there is a flag at the line of scrimmage. Oh, 
<laughs> did what he's kind of limping back to the huddle saying, wait a minute. All that work I did for nothing? There were two fouls on the play. Holding on the offense, personal foul on the defense. Those penalties will offset, we'll replay the down. All right. Well, we're going to replay the down, but I bet you don't see a replay of, of that play, particular play. Well, look at the changes coming to the lineup now. What, what down Tyler, is it? Tyler Jones is. They just sent the field goal unit in. That's still first down. <laughs> I'm not sure what. A little confusion by the Broncos. Yeah, big time confusion. And the 25 second clock's running, so they better get a play call here. They better call timeout, is what they better do. Yeah. Down to 12, 10. Gilligan splits out wide to the left side. Clocks at four. Gets it off. And D Mike gets nailed by D.D. D. Johnson. Well, that was about as confusing a set of downs as I've ever seen. There is no time with as mobile as this front is for SMU to dance around. He might tries to hit the hole quick, but there's guys in his face and he has nowhere to go. Johnson is right there. Second down and goal. Dinwiddie, almost intercepted. That's Bischoff. It is Bischoff. Uh, Brian Bischoff, who already has one interception this year, had it in his hands, and now it'll be third in goal. Maybe they had a premonition about that field goal. Yeah. But I've, I've never seen it on first down unless we were in overtime. Third and goal, Gilligan. And Blaser wide to the left side. David Michael and Tony McPherson wide to the right. Quick slant in for the touchdown is Tim Gilligan. And Gilligan with his second touchdown of the game makes it 37 to nothing. Great job by Gilligan of running that little in route, shielding himself, he gets his body between himself and the defender, cradles the ball and gets it into the end zone. Very nice route. Moodley had no clue. He just stood there and watched Gilligan make the move. Tyler Jones out of the hold of Mike Sanford. It is good. There are 10 minutes left to play here in the third quarter, and the Broncos, as you take a look at Dan Hawkins, still coming up with more plays, leads it 38 to nothing. Play 55 yards scoring drive took right around four minutes, and the Broncos lead it 38 to nothing as Dan Hawkins sends his defensive unit out, and Tyler Jones blasts it off. And once again, he kicks it out of bounds. It was close, it was close to being perfect, but it went out about the uh, four yard line. And uh, so the Mustangs will have their best field position, starting field position of the night as we take you down to the field in Jeff Caves. You know, conference expansion has been a big point. I did a radio interview on KTIK yesterday with Rance Pugmire, the athletic director at Utah State. One thing he said surprised me, sure he'd be open to a WAC invitation. He talked about a potential for a Sunbelt WAC merger. These two conferences getting together. It'd be interesting to see what Boise State and what their reaction would be to that, Ted. Richard Bartell, the quarterback for SMU, just wants to get out of this game alive. High snap, give to Kincaid. Kincaid goes nowhere. Loss of a couple of yards as Mike Williams, the redshirt freshman out of Lethbridge, Alberta, makes the stop. We're fortunate to have here in the booth here in the second half the athletic director for the Boise State Broncos, Gene Blameyer. Gene, glad to have you here in Dallas. Great to be here. It's a beautiful day, and the Broncos are doing well. Boy, the Broncos are playing well, aren't they? Sure are. They're looking great, and uh, it's a great afternoon if you're a Bronco. Second down, 11 yards to go for Bartell. Let's go, Mustang! 
Patel, plenty of time, thrown across the middle. Nice catch by Chris Cunningham. Cunningham has it at the 45-yard line. Wes Nurse makes the stop. Gene and the Mustangs have a first down. Gene, big promotion uh, this coming week at the stadium. Buck up for the Broncos is coming back to the uh, to Broncos Stadium. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it is, Larry, uh, next Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock uh, when we play San Jose State. Uh, that's designated as Buck up for the Bronco Day. And uh, that promotion uh, last year and this year is going to fund summer school scholarships uh, for all of our student athletes. That's awesome. That, that really is a need that I know Coach Hawk has addressed, and a lot of the other programs have done the same thing. First and ten for the Mustangs. Bartell to throw again. Set. Throwing. Complete. Knocked out of bounds is Trey Griffin, the junior out of Lockhart, Texas. So, Gene, for the people that maybe didn't go to the game last year when Buck up for the Broncos evolved, how does that work and how do people participate? Well, we're going to have uh, containers uh, out in the parking lot before the game and at all of the entrances uh, as people come into Broncos Stadium. Uh, we would ask that you bring a check, uh, a donation uh, to uh, contribute to the uh, Buck up for the Broncos program, and then we take that money, and uh, that is used to provide athletic summer school scholarships for uh, all of our student athletes, and and that's a critical need that that we have uh, at Boise State. Uh, the more student athletes we can keep in Boise and and have them go to school and work out during the summer, uh, the better they're going to be uh, throughout the academic year, and 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 also the closer they're going to get to graduating. So it's something that our coaches emphasize that that we want to be able to provide for our student athletes and but in order to do that we need to raise the funds to do it and and our goal uh, is you know anywhere from 100 to 150 thousand dollars second down eight yards to go that was Kincaid on that last carry good for two yards Avalos with the tackle Martel last time he got this deep through an interception not this time Rushbrook has it at the 15 down to about the 14 yard line so Gene, buck up for the Broncos next Saturday, 1 o'clock start time. Now, I know there might be some folks a little confused. It's not a night game. It is an afternoon game next week at 1 o'clock. So bring your checkbook, bring some cash, look for the buckets all over the stadium on the entryways on your way into the into the game, and uh, buck up for the Broncos. Absolutely. Uh, like I said, it, it's a great cause, and uh, it goes directly to the student athletes uh, to help them in school and to help them graduate. And we would appreciate everybody's participation in this uh, great fundraiser. Griffin splits out wide to the right side on first and 10 at the 13-yard line. Bartell, five-step drop, throws into the end zone. Rushbrook is there, but it's just tipped away at the last second. Nice defensive effort that time by Terrell Hall, who hasn't had a chance to play much this year, but got his hand on that one. Take, Excuse take me, a, that's Gabe Franklin, 16. Take another look at this one. Pressure up the middle from Carr. Makes him throw the ball probably before he wanted to, but great defensive backfield coverage. How many times have these guys touched the ball today? They've had their hands on a lot of passes that Bartell's thrown. Franklin had to stretch out to get that one, and he just got his fingertips on it. Well, Gene, you got to give us now a quick update on Delaware. How are they doing today? Did they win? Uh, the uh, the Blue Hens won again. They are undefeated, Larry. They're 7-0 wow. and all right now, ranked fourth in the nation. Of course, your, your son still, goes yeah. to school there. That's right, and uh, he's getting a chance to play this year. They're having a great year. And uh, but, but they've got some tough games ahead of them in the next four weeks. Matt Rushbrook again on that pass reception. And this is the deepest penetration the Mustangs have had as you watch it again. Quick toss. Rushbrook tries to come back inside. Meets a whole host of Broncos. Led by Brad Allen. Third down now. Well, Gene, thanks for stopping by. We'll remind folks again all week long about uh, Buck Up for the Broncos. Bring some cash, bring your checkbook, bring whatever. Just Buck Up for the Broncos next Saturday, 1 o'clock against San Jose. Bartell to throw on third down into the end zone. Knocked oh, away nice. beautifully. Intended for Matt Rushbrook once again. And Julius Brown was right there. Julius Brown's going to force the field goal team to come on for SMU. Man, 38 to nothing. I don't know if I'd be kicking many field goals. Well, I think we saw Coach Hawkins' philosophy in that regard. They obviously want to get that goose egg off the scoreboard. What a great recovery by Julius Brown that time. Chris McMurray is three of five field goals on the year. And the goose egg is off the board as Chris McMurray hits his fourth field goal of the year. You know, incredibly, Pope, this team has only scored six touchdowns all season long. Will they be able to score one today? Find out. Stay with us.
Welcome back to Dallas, Texas, where the Boise State Broncos lead it by a score of 38-3. to The Bronco Television Network update scoreboard brought to you by Sinclair Oil, where you get unbeatable gasoline with the quality and performance you can trust. Ohio State leading there. Florida trailing Arkansas. Northern Illinois, boy, what a surprise they've been this year. Chris McMurray with only his second kickoff of the game. Well, David Michael's going to take it out. 15, and he gets to right about the 20-yard line. Gets a hand up from Swenson. Nine-play, 55-yard scoring drive for the Mustangs of SMU. A Chip shot, 27-yard field goal by McMurtry. And Ryan Dinwiddie trots back out onto the field with 6.37 left to go here in the third quarter. Lawrence Beatty wide to the left side. And flags fall. Too much time? No, nope. there's clock still running. Infraction on defense, five-yard penalty remains first down. A substitution infraction, okay. And by the rule book, you're supposed to check into the huddle before you go to your position, and if they're running guys in and out of the game, sometimes you can't do that. First and five now. Ball at the 24, didn't want to throw again. He has got Acre. And Acre is down to the 41-yard line. Jonas Rutledge gets beat again. And Rutledge, who is not getting up for a while, Rutledge is shaking his head. Acre runs right by him. Didn't we do a good job looking to his left first, then he comes back to Acre, who was his receiver all the way. There's separation between Acre and Rutledge. Rutledge loses his helmet there. He's going to have to come out of the game. The training staff came onto the field, so he'll check out. Nine catches for 109 yards for Acre. And the junior out of Pocatello, Idaho, whose Highland High School team is still unbeaten this year, is a marketing major at Boise State. They sure sold on, a, on the pass routes, I'll tell you that. First and ten. Donnie Heck. It's upended after a gain of a couple of yards. Mike McLeod getting up slowly. The big senior center from Lakita High School in Indio, California. Interesting article this week in the Statesman quoting him about how he has such trouble keeping weight on during the season and working with nutritionists trying to eat the right stuff to keep, to keep a balanced diet but yet still keep the weight on. His parents fly in for every game. Didn't really looks like he's cheesed, changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Oh. Throwing for Beatty. He's got him. Touchdown, Lawrence Beatty. What an effort as he gets away from Roland Humphrey. Rolando Humphrey cannot keep up with Beatty, who's had a sensational game this afternoon. Well, apparently whatever play that was that was initially called and whatever the audible was that came after it was the right call because Dinwiddie hit him on stride, but the defender was right in his hip pocket and watched the effort to get that ball, hang on to it, and get into the end zone. Great effort by Lawrence Beatty. Tyler Jones. That was another marginal snap. Mike Sanford handles well. Makes the score 45 to 3. Dinwiddie has now passed for 509 yards. He's close to his career best of 532. Will he get it? Stay with us. Ryan Dinwiddie, his second 500 yard game in a Boise State uniform. An all-time Boise State record, of course. His first one was the game you watched here on the Bronco Television Network against Louisiana Tech. Tyler Jones kicks it out of bounds again. His second straight out of bounds kickoff. 
And Tyler's not going to be happy about that. As you take a look at Jonas Rutledge, who has only had a chance to return one uh, kick so far. Three play, 80 yard scoring drive. Only took a minute 13 off the clock. And look at the smile on Ryan Dinwiddie's face. Well, he should be happy with that performance. And gee, it was all of two weeks ago that he had his first 500 yard game. Had a little uh, little blip against Tulsa last week, but hey, when you when you have trouble remembering the second half, yeah. who can blame you if you had a tough night? 592 total yards for the Broncos. Kincaid breaks one tackle and actually picks up six or seven. The Broncos had that thing defended pretty good, but Kincaid did a great job of gathering his feet and just kind of waiting for the guys to run by him, and they cut back against him. West Nurse, Cam Hall, and Chris Carr all up off the bottom of the pile. And they give him eight yards on forward progress. Mike Dominguez checking into the defensive line. Second down and two. Trey Griffin in motion. Kincaid has the first down. Andrew Browning picks up his 12th tackle of the year. Browning, a redshirt freshman out of Lake Oswego, Oregon. And they'll move the chains. Kincaid had over 70 yards in the first half. He's got to be getting semi-close to that 100-yard mark. Kincaid came into this ball game with 654 yards rushing. Matt Rushbrook splits wide to the right side. And then told, or excuse me, SMU wants timeout. Cartel doesn't like what he sees. Are you an aggressive driver when you're running late? If you ever speed, tailgate, or run red lights, you are an aggressive driver. The Idaho Office of Highway Safety reminds everyone to remember, aggressive driving kills. You're risking more than just your life. I've seen some aggressive driving here in Dallas. They are aggressive people here. You have to be aggressive getting on and off those freeways. Yep. But this is a beautiful city. A 9.4 yard per play average for the Boise State Broncos and head coach Dan Hawkins. Is that a smile? That is an amazing number right there. Dan Hawkins is saying to uh, to his, his putter, Springer there, he says, you're liable not to let her at this rate. Jeff Caves is down on the sidelines. Jeff, what do you got for us? Looking now for the next quarterback for Boise State in the second half. Continue this football game. It looks like it's going to be Mike Sanford. He's been taking some snaps with the center. Most of us thought maybe Zabransky would get the work. Perhaps his shoulder's not fully healed, but it looks like Sanford will come in and Ryan's done for the day. Ted? Well, so he won't set a new record. That's Zabransky going along shaking hands with everybody. Bartell, Kincaid gets nothing. Boy, a nice job by Brad Allen yep. to knife in off the corner and take the legs out from under Kincaid. Still picks up two or three yards, but a good effort by number 31 off the right side of the defensive formation. Hey, Brad Allen's listed at 5'9", 180 pounds. If you stood next to him, you'd say, this kid's a sixth grader. But he's all heart. He's just an incredible player. All heart and muscle. Second and eight. Bartell throws it incomplete, intended for Griffin. All right, check that. That's Chris Cunningham. Ryan, was Ryan signing autographs up there? I guess he is done for the day. Up there talking to the crowd, talking to the family, sign a few autographs. Well, I'll tell you, the biggest crowd congregation here is right across the way, and it's Boise State fans. That's the biggest congregation of anybody here. Now, there are more SMU fans, but look at this. This is the biggest congregation of fans in any one place in the stadium today. Well, they're certainly having more fun than the guys in red and blue. One of ten on third down conversions for the Mustangs today. Well, they're trying it here. Third down and seven. Bartell throws complete to Cunningham for the first down. As he crosses the 40 to the 38-yard line, Wes Nurse makes the stop. And Bartell just had too much time. 
Broncos coming with just a three-man rush that time. Eight people back in coverage. But when you're asked to cover somebody that long for that period of time, it's very difficult to do. Dane Oldham has checked back into the ball game. Mike Dominguez is still in. First and 10 for the Mustangs with 3.15 left to play here in the third quarter. Bartell under pressure, throwing long. Rushbrook knocked away by Julius Brown. Awesome job by Julius Brown of closing the gap between himself and the receiver after the ball was in the air. He just put on a burst of speed, ran to the receiver, knocked the ball out of his hands. It was a great recovery. See, he's, Look, Rushbrook is open here. Yeah, he's open there. And watch the last-minute recovery. He comes over the top and knocks it out of there. That is really Perfect. a nice job. Defensive back play. Second and 10. Martell, down he goes. Cam Hall with another big hit. Hall with his third tackle for a loss this year. And if Hall hadn't got him, Julius uh, Roberts, Roberts was right there waiting for him. The whole left side collapses. Martell can't wait to get to Conference USA at this rate. And you can see Roberts being held there by the tight end, but nobody blocked Cam Hall. Third down and about 21 yards to go. And Richard Bartell says, I'm not sure what play in the book you want me to run. Down 42 points. Facing third and 21. I don't have that play. But you have a play. Stay tuned at the end of our broadcast for the Idaho Lottery Lucky Play of the Game. We'll feature one of the Broncos' top plays of the day, sponsored by the Idaho Lottery, encouraging players everywhere to score big. Now, Ted, I've had to explain this promotion. And it's the lucky play of the game. It doesn't mean the Broncos were lucky. Yep. It means it's the lucky play of the game. Now, there is a difference there, and I've tried to explain this to some of our viewers, but, you know, let's just let it suffice to say this is the lucky play of the game because if you're playing the lottery and you win, that would be the lucky play of the day. That would be lucky. There you go. Okay, as we take a look at the Sinclair scoreboard, Michigan all over Illinois, Nebraska, embarrassing Texas A&M, Auburn over Mississippi State. They can't get rid of their coach soon enough. Texas rebounding, Oklahoma State shutting down a, that high-powered Texas Tech. Wow, look at Hawaii. Hawaii and, and La Tech, interesting. Yeah, but that game's got a long way to go. Nevada. BYU and Wyoming, no score. What was the Nevada score? I missed that one. Were they up or down? Nevada was up by two touchdowns. All right, third and ten. Rushbrook wide to the right side. Cunningham and Griffin wide to the left. Avalos on the blitz. Missed the tackle, and down goes Bartell. Look, there's five guys back there around him. Five Broncos in the backfield on top of it. No way you can throw that ball. Berger, I think, is going to get uh, credit for the sack. For Travis Berger, that would be his first sack of the year. Look at the, I mean, this is the jailbreak from Sing Sing, man. There is no way this guy is getting away from that pass rush. Dominguez and Berger on his tail. There's nowhere to go. Bartels just says, I'm done. Let me go. The Conference USA. His whack is too tough. Ryan Menzel, who will earn his letter this afternoon. Good punt. Gilligan lets it go. And it dies right at the 25-yard line. Well, that's one thing I've noticed about this new synthetic turf is when the punts hit this stuff, they really, they die. Yeah. I mean, it's like dropping in a 60-degree uh, lob wedge into the green from 100 yards out. It's amazing. At the end of today's game, be sure to stay tuned for the Subway Sub of the Game. We'll highlight a non-starting player who's made a major contribution to today's game. Brought to you by Subway. Eat fresh. Well, let's see who's coming out to run the offense. Jared Zabransky. Jared Zabransky gets the call. So I guess that shoulder's healed up enough. 
but he's going to give it another wing. Another Red, try. Redshirt freshman out of Hermiston, Oregon. He's completed three of six passes so far this year. Zabransky sets, throws, complete to Mark Onabakun. First time we've called Mark Onabakun's name today. Yeah, that's only the second pass he's caught. First one was only for a yard, so uh, that picks up 12 or 13. Mark Onabakun, the JC transfer from Lakewood, Washington, and Butte College. New center in the game for Boise State, Joe Weigand checks in for Mike McLeod. Gilligan can't handle it. His pass was a little too much in front of him, and it'll be second down and 10. They're in college still in the lineup. Yeah, college is still out there. Turner's still out there. Totogi's still in there. Darren College's mom flies in from North Pole, Alaska for about half the Bronco games. What, a, what an engaging young man he is. I had a, yeah. a half-hour conversation with him yesterday at the hotel. I mean, just a fascinating kid. He's got a big what a future. What a job he does. Big future ahead of that guy. Yeah. Second 10. And whistles blow. Clock ran out. Sometimes happens with a... More inexperienced Michael quarterback Kelly in the game. Remain second out. So it'll be second and 15. You know, I don't think Kyle Stringer, who has got a lot of family here, he's from Humble, Texas, I don't think he, he hasn't punted yet today, has he? No, he has not. Although the official stats at halftime had him for one punt for no yards, but they slipped that one in on me because I yeah. don't remember that happening. Zabransky throws the screen. The ball is on the ground. Joe Recovered Wigan. by Joe Wigan, and they're going to call it a fumble. Good hustle by the replacement center, who's done a good job. Uh, had a little problem with a car accident that delayed his morphing into a little better player for a while because he had some headaches and, and concussion results from that accident. But a good hustle there, and he outraced the D lineman to the football. 6'1", 287 pound freshman. Good speed. You see the ball pop out there, and look at Wagon, man. He is, he is running. Wagon went to La Costa Canyon High School, one of the most exclusive high schools in the country. Zabransky goes down. D.D. Lee. Out of Nacogdoches, Texas. Well, now you're going to get quarterback see, sack. You're going to get to see Stringer now. And Kyle Stringer, averaging 41.8 yards a punt, as you watch it again, will get his first chance to kick it away. Bransky has nowhere to go. Those linebackers blitzing up the middle. But not before we end the third quarter of play here. With the score, the Broncos 45, SMU 3. They've got young players, they've got young fans here at SMU, and a youngster, a freshman, Kyle Stringer, will punt for the Broncos. But not before. They're going to back it up five yeah, yards. Brad Hall jumped off sides, I think. Blake Warren is back deep. He averages right, 13. Snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains fourth down. Well, this will not be a series that Dan Hawkins will be pleased with. I think he expects a little crisper execution from his second team guys, and it's not all second team guys, actually. Stringer is now kicking out of his own end zone. He has built his average up to 41.8 yards a punt. Good snap. Big rush. Look at that Takes bounce. a great bounce. Blake Warren picks it up, breaks a tackle. Breaks another tackle, but Brad Allen gets it. Nice job by Brad Allen getting downfield and making the stop. 
at the 40-yard line as you take a look at the Washington Trust Bank third quarter statistics. That was a 50-yard punt, too, and the Broncos racking up some numbers, not on that last drive, but certainly have put up a big, big number today. 590 total yards. They're still over 100 off their high against Louisiana Tech. And surprisingly, the time of possession, not really yeah. that unbalanced. Got to remember those three fourth downs that they missed. Kincaid. Four yards, maybe. We're in the final quarter here in Dallas, Texas, and very probably the last time Boise State will ever come here if SMU does as everyone expects, leaves the Western Athletic Conference along with Tulsa and Rice to go to Conference USA. I think really it's just a matter of crossing the T's and dotting the I's on some contracts and that will come to fruition. Mustangs will be in Boise next year, though. Kincaid. Is close to first down yardage. Deshaun Caban getting a chance to play a little defense, not just special teams. Larry Pulaski's favorite player on this team. That uh, just took Kincaid over the 100-yard mark. He now has 20 carries for 101 yards rushing today. So he's done better than his average. He averages 3.7 yards a, a carry. Of course, he had that 142-yarder. Third down. Let's see if the Broncos can stop him here. Bartell under pressure, and down he goes. Great stop that time. It's Brad Allen again off Brad the corner. Brad Allen just nailed him. Untouched off the left side of the defensive formation. Nobody saw him, and especially Bartell. Brad Allen came into this game with three tackles for a loss. He's had two more today. That's the first time Bartell realized that 31 was coming off the corner as he hit him. That is a blind side, and a good job by Allen not to get his helmet in there to make a good form tackle. Great effort. Nobody gets hurt in a play like that. Short punt, but Gilligan has no chance to catch it. Takes a Bronco bounce, and it'll be down at about the 34-yard line. We've got 12.40 left to play in this blowout as the Broncos are all over the Mustangs of SMU by a score of 45-3. to three. Welcome back to Dallas, Texas, where the Hawaiian flyaway winner is... Michael Monroe from Eagle, Idaho. Congratulations, the Bronco Television Network. Congratulates you. You just won a trip for two to Hawaii to see the Broncos take on the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii. Spend a few days on Waikiki. Compliments of Harmon Travel and the Bronco Television Network. Mike Sanford gets the call. Carpenter moves his way to the outside, and Carpenter picks up about eight yards before Jonas Rutledge makes the stop. Jeff Carpenter getting his first chance to play this year. And he'll, I guess he'll stay in the game. Lee Marks was headed into the game, but they're giving different personnel for this particular play. Mike Sanford, Mike Sanford whose father is the offensive coordinator for the University of Utah. Sanford, set, throws, complete to Lundin. Lundeen crosses the 50 to the 40, down to about the 39-yard line. Trent Lundeen with his first catch of the day. Or check out Derek Schumann. Derek Schumann, 91, not 81. Schumann's wide open. Sanford takes the five-step drop, flips it out to his big tight end. Turns up field and runs. Get a little daylight. Looking for somebody to hit. Derek Schumann. Came into this ball game with eight catches for 99 yards. That puts him over the 100-yard mark for the year. First and 10, and Sanford gives to Marks. Marks is his third carry of the afternoon. That one wasn't as good as the other two. Ryan Dinwiddie, six receivers, 509 yards, four touchdowns. What an afternoon. Pretty good three-quarters worth of work. Second nine. 
Sanford almost had it picked off. Rutledge was there. It was intended for T.J. Acri, but right in the hands of Rutledge, and he couldn't hold on. Third down now at nine. Well, that's two picks he's dropped today. This one is a great break on the ball. Gets in front of the receiver, does a nice job, but the receiver does a pretty good job, too, of stripping that ball out of there, T.J. Acre. Third down, Gilligan. Beatty go wide to the right side. Acre comes wide to the left. Sanford throws complete to Carpenter, and Carpenter has nothing. He has maybe a yard, and it'll be fourth down at the 35-yard line. D.D. Johnson with the stop. And uh, I don't see any punt teams coming in. I see Jerry Smith coming in with a play. Now, this is no man's land right here. It's too far for the field goal re in reality. And out goes Kevin Lousman. Punting does not much good, so send three wide receivers to the right, one to the left, see what happens. Sanford throws incomplete, intended for Acre, who couldn't hold on. Pass was just a little too high, and they'll turn the ball over to the Mustangs. So 0 for 4 on fourth down situations. That's the last time you heard that. We've got 10-18 left to play in the ball game. Lots of new faces. Stick around to see who gets to play the rest of the way. Welcome back to Dallas, where lots of second-string players are getting their chance to play here in uh, the fourth quarter of this ball game. In fact, a new quarterback, Tate Wallace, is in. And Guerrero jumps offside for the Broncos. Free play. Ball knocked out of bounds, intended for Rushbrook. Terrell Hall was there, but Guerrero is going to get charged with jumping off sides. Alex Guerrero, one of the happiest guys on this team out of Brea, California. He's a communications major, wants to get into our line of business. He's certainly got the gift of gab for it. Maybe we should talk to some, some sense into him before he actually embarks on that. But. <laughs> oh, it's been a great career. I've loved every minute of it. That's the fourth offsides penalty for the Broncos today. I'm not sure I've ever seen that. Two on the first series. Tate Wallace, a 6'3", 237-pound sophomore out of Ennis, Texas. Ennis is where the famed Texas drag strip is. Is he? Pitches out to uh, number 25, Johnny Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, a redshirt freshman out of Red Oak, Texas. Picks up about five yards. And with a guy as big as Wallace in, in the state of Texas, you would expect to see some option possibilities. And they do it here. Good pitch. Broncos don't see the option very often. He's carried the ball 24 times for a total of 60 yards. Fitzgerald, that's his first carry of the year. Second one. Give to the fullback, and Brown may not have gotten it. He didn't. They're spotting it behind at 45. Darren Brown, a 5'10", 230-pound fire plug junior out of Angleton, Texas, does not make it as we take you back down to Jeff Caves. Jeff. One youngster for Boise State you won't see in is Jeff Biederman. He's got what's now called the Jake Plummer fracture. Actually... It's a stress fracture of his foot. He doesn't know how it occurred. It must have happened during practice. But he's a youngster you just see down here right now, Ted. Young freshman. Mike Dominguez on the defensive line. Andrew Browning in there. The Jake Plummer injury. Ooh, that was an indictment, wasn't it? Johnny Fitzgerald has the first down on third and one. Fitzgerald, a redshirt freshman. Tim Hefty in the game. Mike Fine in the game for the Broncos. Chris Barrios. Jared Hunter, number 49, also checking in. Deshaun Cabong at free safety. Well, Barrios is one of those guys that battled Corey Hall for the starting linebacker position.
And once again, the give is to Johnny Fitzgerald. And I think everybody just wants to get this game over with. 45 to 3 is the score. I think the Broncos are just a few yards short of a school record of total offense, aren't they? They're in the low 500s. If they get the ball back, 732, I don't think they're going to get to that one for a while, which was what they put up against, or 726, whatever it was against Oh, Scott is that Tech. what it was? Okay. It was a lot. That's what it is. They're close to the passing mark. Quick toss. Complete to number 18, Jamon Cleveland, freshman out of Baytown, Texas. He only had one catch coming into this game. He's had a career day today. We had two early in the first half, and that was yep. the last time they threw to him. Bring up third and short. Wallace gives to Cleveland. Cleveland's nailed at the line of scrimmage, but I think he has enough for the first down. We had it enough of the first push that he gave, and then it's the second effort. He definitely got enough, so they'll move the chains again. Alex Guerrero gets credit with the tackle. It's his sixth tackle of the year. They spread people out wide. Ronaldo Pellerin comes wide to the right side. Wallace fakes the give. Throwing long. Has Rushbrook down there, but can't get the ball to him. Terrell Hall, one-on-one -on -one coverage. And it'll be second and ten. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this team only has six touchdowns all season long. Ted, this is our last broadcast on the Bronco Television Network. Uh, we'll, we'll pick up the Nevada game at home towards the end of the season, which could uh, end up being a heck of a ball game. Huge game. But uh, ESPN2 will take over for us for three ball games, and then we're going to come back on December 6th with some basketball for you. Quick toss. Complete to Blake Warren, but not enough for the first down. Interesting stat. SMU has six touchdowns on the year. Boise State has six touchdowns today. That is an interesting stat. I'm not sure it's a real popular one here in Dallas, but apparently by the turnout, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Maybe hey. the change to Conference USA will get some, you know, life breathed back into this program. I'm not sure how that'll work or how it won't work. But look at the look at the turnout here. It's awful pretty stadium to only have that many folks around. It's a beautiful stadium, a beautiful city, and just no one cares. This is Texas, Texas A&M country. Maybe TCU. Good for the first down. Johnny Fitzgerald gets some significant playing time. And the Mustangs have another first down. It's going to be interesting. The rushing yard is going to be pretty even when this day is over. Well, let's see if the Broncos' second team can hold them out of the end zone. You know, one of the few rush-oriented teams I've ever seen beat the Broncos is, is Rice. And, that, again, that option was so uh, hard to defend when you only see it once a year. Chris Barrios just nailed Fitzgerald as he came over his right tackle. Barrios, a sophomore out of Upland, California. Social science major for the Broncos. Broncos will take on San Jose State next Saturday at Bronco Stadium. 1 p.m. start time in Boise. Buck up for the Bronco Day. Bring your cash, bring your checks, bring your money orders. They've had sellouts. They've had at least 30000 for each game so far. Let's keep it going. Fumble. And down he goes. Guerrero gets the stop. 
Alex Guerrero with his first sack of the year. And the big 6'1", 279er puts Wallace on his wallet. Wow. Fumbles it. And now, here comes Guerrero. It's a little help from Andrew Browning, but Guerrero will sure be credited with that sack. And I'm not so sure the fumble really mattered that much. It looked like Guerrero was going to be there anyway. Third down, 15 for the Mustangs. Ronaldo Pellerine splits out wide to the left side. Wallace under pressure again, gets away from Hefty. Now he's going to run it. Does not have enough for the first down, but he picked up a significant part of it. And Guerrero ran out of his shoe. Wallace, a big guy, 6'3", almost 240. That's a lot of quarterback. Mike Dominguez, the Richard Fleshman out of Oxnard, California, Rio Mesa High School. That guy's bigger than every linebacker on Boise State's roster. Think about that. And Dane Oldham has to come off the bench to replace Guerrero while he fixes his shoe. Fourth down. That doesn't make a guy, a senior like Dane Oldham, very happy when he has to come back into the game after being out for almost the entire fourth quarter. Fourth and six. Wallace being chased by Oldham. And being chased by Brown and gets away. Being chased again. Throws incomplete along the sidelines. Intended for Jamon Cleveland. And now the Mustangs have missed on fourth down. And the Broncos will have a chance to add to that offensive total. We've got three minutes left to play. Who will get a chance to, uh, will the Broncos score on offense again? Find out next. Ted, it's time now for our Subway Sub of the Game. Brought to you by your local Subway store. How about this guy? Lawrence Beatty, three receptions for 133 yards, including one 98-yarder that went all the way to the one-yard line. A 98-yarder that doesn't get you a touchdown. That's got to be frustrating. But he got his touchdown later. Heck of a game. Lawrence Beatty is your Subway Sub of the Game. Subway, eat fresh. Jared Zaransky back in. Throws complete to Tony McPherson. Zabransky, the redshirt freshman out of Hermiston, Oregon. And Zabransky kind of wobbled that thing out there, and McPherson caught it, but McPherson got away with a gigantic push-off from Rolando Humphrey to create that kind of separation. Humphrey's got walking back with his arms up to the referee, like, what are you looking at? Mark Odebacoon goes wide to the right side. McPherson comes wide to the left. Double tight ends. It's going to be pretty basic from here on. Jeff Carpenter barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Carpenter getting his first significant playing time. Five nine, 195 pounder. Out of Kuna High, Kuna High School. Be interesting to see uh, Coach Hawkins' reaction after the game and hear his comments. And Jeff Caves will corral him and maybe a player or two if we can get an interview. We'll talk to some of these guys about this big win today. Hey, it's a whack win. That's all it counts. They tried the quick look in pass to Beatty, and boy, the Mustangs had that one well sniffed out. Brian Bischoff whose number we haven't called a lot today, but he was all over that play. A wide receiver screen, the offensive lineman released to the flat, throw it to Beatty and see what happens, but too much penetration by this Mustang defense fouled that up. Nothing going on that play. Third down play. So far the second stringers only have one first down. And flags fall as legal motion. People jumped off sides. That might have been on the center. It looks like it looked like he didn't snap it when he was supposed to. There was a false start on the offense. Five yard penalty remains third down. I think there was more than one person jumping around on that one. Two twelve left to play in the game. Forty five to three is our score. We are in an absolutely gorgeous press box here, and there are two press people in it. There's room for about 70, and there are two people in the press well, box. I like this one gal here from the local paper. At least she hung on to the end. Yep. 
Third down and 15. Zabransky, plenty of time. Now he's going to run it. And he will pick up about four yards, but he's going to be way short as Melvin Williams gets the tackle for SMU. And Kyle Stringer is going to get a chance to show off for friends and family. He's got a big contingent of family here. Blake Warren will be back for SMU to potentially return this punt. Greg Swenson's got a lot of family down here. His first kick was 51 yards, Ted. See what he can do with this one. Good snap. Fumbled a bit. Ooh. That won't make the highlight reel. Well, here is our Connecticut Quality Water Systems player of the game. You Not know, we've doubt. given it to this guy many times this year in our five broadcasts that we've done with good reason. Look at the numbers that this young man put up today. 27 to 36, over 500 yards, four uh, passing touchdowns and one on the ground. Ryan Dinwiddie is your Connecticut Quality Water Systems player of the game. Well, it certainly won't be Kyle Stringer. He only had nine yards on that last punt. And if you want some clean water, you call those guys at Connecticut. They will clean your water up in a heartbeat. Absolutely. There's nothing better than good, clean water. It Amen. really is great. Amen. Wallace tries to throw it out to Darren Brown, the fullback, and the little 230-pound 5'10 spark plug. Can't quite get there. The Idaho drive of the office, game. Idaho, Idaho Office of Highway Safety. Idaho Office of Highway Safety drive, drive of, of the, the game. game. Let's take a look at it. There's RD doing his thing. And his thing was pretty good today. Great pass there. Just time after time. Donnie Heck. It's a little, it's gets a little a helicopter of yards. action. You know, that looked like a wrestling move. And then how about Lawrence Beatty fighting for the ball, getting that thing into the end zone. That is your Idaho Office of Safety drive of the game. Lawrence Beatty with only three catches, but boy, did he make the most of it. And the two-minute clock comes up, compliments of the network group for all your computer problems. You got a network that's acting up on you, call these guys. I guarantee they will fix it. They do a great job. Third down and almost 10 for the Mustangs. Wallace sets, throws, completes it to Matt Rushbrook, who finally got a pass interception. Good for the first down. He's had a lot of balls thrown towards him today, but most of the time the Bronco defenders have knocked him down. This one really rifled out into the flat. Rushbrook makes the catch. That stops the clock with 23 seconds left to play in the game. Tate Wallace, the 6'3", 237-pound sophomore, trying to break this touchdown drought. Four-man rush by the Broncos. Quick toss. Goes immediately to Blake Warren. And our la last award of the day is our Idaho Lottery lucky play of the game. This is the long pass play that does not result in the touchdown, but it does result in 98 yards for the offense. Lawrence Beatty takes it down to the one yard line. What a play. That is your Idaho Lottery lucky play of the game. And that ends the game here as you take a look at victorious head coach Dan Hawkins talking to his good friend Phil Bennett. Specialist, as Hawkins has said several times, that uh, Bennett is a defensive genius, and he's shown it at various stops along the way. As a matter of fact, uh, found out he used to coach with Mike Sanford's dad at Purdue several years ago. He did not have an answer for this Boise State offense today, though. 45 oh, sure points on the board and over 500 yards in total offense. It was the, he was the second leading offense in the Western Athletic Conference coming into this ball game, but Boise State is a very, very powerful offensive unit. Jeff Caves down on the field as we take him down. Jeff Caves and the victorious coach, Dan Hawkins. Hawk, this is about as complete as it's been this season, wouldn't you agree? 
Yeah, we're getting there. You know, we didn't turn the ball over, and penalties were a lot better. And I see the DBs make some plays, and uh, you know, other than just a couple opportunities on offense, but uh, RD shot the lights out. Good, solid performance all the way around. What do you credit this win to? Because mentally, you guys had to be real tough to come in here in this environment with so few people here and get yourselves up. Was that difficult? Yeah, well, we've been through that before, as you all know, and I think these guys have learned from it, and certainly I've learned from it. So we kind of prepare for that and get them ready to go and understand it's got to be their own energy to make it happen. I mean, is there anything in this game that you'd like to see done over or done better outside of the punting, maybe? Well, yeah, those, you know, we missed a couple opportunities throwing the ball down here and, and in the red zone that we would like to have back. but. I mean, I was happy. We made a lot of plays. We had a lot of guys step up, and the uh, special teams were good, and defense made a lot of plays. It was nice to see our secondary really come in and make some, some good knockaways and do some things like that and hang on the ball. It was pretty clean. What about Ryan's performance? Talk about it after the, uh, last week and compare it to this week. Well, obviously, he was stellar. I mean, he did a great job. I don't know what his stats are, but he shot the lights out and had a lot of guys help him out, and, and really some guys going to make some plays, particularly Lawrence. Yeah, I think 27, 36, over 400 yards, four touchdowns. Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive. And we obviously know he's his go-to guy, so or he's our go-to guy. And uh, But it was, a, it was a good win for us. We've got to wrap this thing up and keep going every week. Impressive, Hawk. Congratulations. All right, thank you. Okay, we've got a couple of players. We're going to get an opportunity to talk to Cam Hall right now. We'll talk to uh, one of the defensive stars today. Cam, congratulations. It was a great effort. Anytime you don't give up six, you got to be pumped. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, if you can hold the team to field goal or a goose egg, it really helps us out. And, you know, today the defense just played real well. How do you feel? I mean, you had that contusion, and, and I know every time you, you get it touched or hit, it can re-injure itself. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm doing pretty well now. It's been a good two weeks since I've been, you know, kind of injury-free. It feels real good. I mean, it's just fun to be out there. How would you describe SMU's offense in terms of what they tried to get done and didn't seem to be able to get established? What else could they counter with? Um, I thought today they came out with four wide receivers, which is uh, kind of something we weren't expecting. And they did pretty well with that until we started figuring it out, and then we played off of that. But the running back does a good job, and they try to do a lot of good things. They're just struggling a little bit right now. Would you describe this team, your team, as a team on a mission? Uh, I think so, yeah, just a little bit. All right, congratulations, Cam. Ryan Dinwoody, uh, tremendous day, Ryan. Congratulations. I don't even know. I know the guys are in the stands are asking you for your stats as if you keep track of them during the game. You don't do that, right? I don't know nothing about it. When I'm out of the game, I ask Max and those guys, you know, but while I'm in the game, I don't worry about that. Yeah. Well, you're player of the game today, and things seem to come together for you real well. How did you feel about what you did today? I felt great. No, no, no I knew going in the game we are going to spread the ball like a lot of tech and run some four wides. And, we went some no huddle on the, uh, you know, coaches let me call my own plays, so really let me get in the game and in sync with my receivers. And uh, when we're doing that, we're spreading the ball and no one can stop us. Would you prefer to do more of that, Ryan, so that you can get some flow to make the play calls on the line of scrimmage? Oh, definitely. Quarterback always wants to throw the ball more, but, uh, you know, some games you can do that, some games you can't. Our coaches do a real good job of keeping us pretty balanced and, uh, no, you got to have a running game because if you don't have a running game, you're going to be screwed. And, uh, you know, this this game was a little bit different. That's just we were throwing the ball so well. But when we play Fresno and some tougher teams, we're going to have both. Well, comparing this performance with last week, certainly this was very, very impressive. Do you sometimes think about that and say, I'm really going to come out and do everything I can to show that that's just one one week out of many? Oh, definitely. You know, I just uh, watched some tape a ton this week, had them figured out pretty well. And, uh Knew we were going to throw the ball, so I was pretty excited going in this week. And, uh, you know, I knew I had my shot to do what we did today, and, you know, it happened to work out that way. All right, congratulations, Ryan. Ted? Ryan Dinwiddie, 509 yards, not a bad afternoon, and a 45-3 to victory. We'll be back with a final word. Stay with us right here on the Bronco Television Network. I know I do. A good old-fashioned Texas butt-kicking, but it was the folks in Texas that got kicked today as the Broncos clearly outclassed the Mustangs of Southern Methodist University. Lots of talk about Southern Methodist leaving the Western Athletic Conference. If they continue to play like that, they won't be missed, Paul. Well, I don't, I'm not sure that this conference move stuff is done. There's no way. There's all kinds of things going to happen. Who knows where people will be. But, Jeff, let's go back down on the field to you. Uh, what kind of chatter were you hearing behind the bench as this game got out of control? Really, those guys were defeated. I, I thought it was interesting to watch Coach Bennett's reactions to how he managed the sidelines with the team. He's a relaxed, laid-back Southern guy. 
I think he knows what he's dealing with. As you guys pointed out many times, 60 freshmen on this team. I, I would think he's playing for two years down the road. He's almost got a free pass, or they would have gotten rid of him by now. I think he knows right where he's at. The team doesn't have much fight because I don't think they know what they can do when they face such an experienced offensive machine as like Boise State. They knew when they got down early, it was over. And Boise State's game plan of all week preparing to come out and get ahead early was extremely effective because it does take a young team down to the point where they don't know how to come back. These guys don't know how to win, let alone how to come back and fight adversity and win. And Boise State does. Hawk has mentioned that BSU has trailed in some games and come back. Boise State has has done some things that look ugly on film or to us, but they're still wins that they've gutted out, and that shows the mark of a champion of a team who's been there, and that's not SMU. So where this team goes from here, I think, starts at the quarterback and the skill positions, where they're very small, and as Ted knows, because he spent so much time here, they're going to have to do a better job of putting up Border Patrol in Texas, and they're going to have to talk to their admissions people about lowering those standards so they can get some kids in here that can play some football and, and stay eligible, but you know, not necessarily are getting turned down by Princeton and admitted into SMU. I, I, I don't know how they're going to fix that ultimately, but I think it will have a huge impact. Guys? Jeff Caves, thanks. Great job as always as we take a look. The uh, Broncos with 81 rushing yards, 80 for the Mustangs, but look at the total yards. Hey, yeah, the you. 641 Thanks, yards in total offense. I mean, that's two weeks, the last two games we've done, Ted. I mean, just incredible production. Yep. 732 yards two weeks ago, over 640 today. Just amazing. Holding uh, the Mustangs of SMU to just 214 yards. No turnovers. Hawkins is uh, going to like that. Coach Hawk loves the fact that uh, there's only seven penalties also. So the, the areas that he was really concerned about showed up today in uh, in great form and the seven penalties for only 35 yards yep. most of them were offsides five yard infractions he can live with that it's the personal fouls it's the 15 yard penalties that were driving him nuts how about this mustangs have more time of possession yeah than boise state did i think that uh, fourth quarter pretty much uh, lends that but that shows you what that stat means virtually nothing yeah. most of the time when you get spanked 45 to 3 we'll be back with a final word from dallas texas and the beautiful new ford stadium like I say, it's a beautiful stadium, but not a very pretty team. Welcome back to Dallas, Texas, where it was a beautiful fall afternoon. 74 degrees, virtually no wind. But boy, the wind whistled through this gorgeous new Gerald R. Ford Stadium to the tune of the Broncos here this afternoon. They had it going. Ryan Dinwiddie was absolutely sensational all afternoon as you take a look at some of the effort from uh, the senior quarterback of Elk Grove, California. Did a great job as he led the uh, Broncos to a 45-3 victory. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Broncos Television Network.